everybody. This is uh, the Drax the Destroyer. And uh, you are now jacked in to the franchise. Uh, let me bring in my co-host. Lo- oh, he's got a very comic booky name. Logan Adair. I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. Yeah, that made me laugh. All right. What does that mean? I have a comic booky name. Logan is Wolverine's name. Oh, I thought you meant like alliteration. That's more comic booky. Well, that's true, but that was just because Stanley couldn't remember the names of his own characters, so he made them all alliterative. So. Peter Quill, not alliterative. Who did he create here? Stanley, no, Stanley didn't create any of these motherfuckers. Oh shit, he's in the movie. Yeah, he sure is. He's he's because he's the Godfather of Marvel, and an R.I.P. to to Stan. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um. All right, today we're covering Guardians of the Galaxy and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 ahead of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which comes out in what, May? Yes. Okay. So uh, let's do it. Let's start at the beginning. The, the Guardians of the Galaxy was created by Stanley as a concept, Logan. Like, he came up with the title, but all the characters were different in the 60s. Like, uh, the the cast that they're using for the movies is from, like, a comic book reboot that didn't come out until 2008. It was created by Dan Abnett and Andy Lanning, and it spun out of uh, Annihilation, which was a big cosmic crossover in Marvel. Were you aware of these guys? Because I didn't know. I learned about them when I saw the trailer for the first time. I remember distinctly watching the trailer. Like, I, I, I read a Guardians of the Galaxy comic when I was a kid in the 90s, but again, it, it had totally different people in it. Um, I was familiar with some of these characters from other books, but I had not read the specific comic that this was based on. I still haven't. So Rocket, Groot, these are new creations? No, Rocket, and, they've creations? been around. Yeah, they, the, the, Rocket and Groot I knew of. Peter Quill, I knew of. I think Amora, I knew of too. I, probably all of them. But uh, yeah, they didn't show up as Guardians of the Galaxy until 2008. Okay, I understand. Yeah. All right, that's out of the way. <laughs> so they uh, they thought that would be a good movie, the 2008 version, and uh, they started development on it around like 2009, like pretty soon after Marvel became a thing. They were like, we could do this maybe a little lower budget and uh, see what happens. Uh, so they hired this lady, Nicole Perlman, to write a screenplay. And she did. And they didn't use Because her of husband it. was Hellboy. They were like, hey, get your wife to c- write the I, Guardians I of the Galaxy. So. Well, I mean, maybe, but I don't think so. Uh, she... Uh, She's she ultimately a lot most of the shit in the movie is not hers, but she still gets a writing credit from the WGA. All right, we'll and and was nominated. You know, the WGA nominated Guardians of the Galaxy for best adapted screenplay that year. How about that? What is the WGA? The Writers Guild of America. Sir. Oh, that's the awards. Who cares about that? That's hey, some people really care about the Guild Awards, the DGAs, huh? Hey, the SAG Awards were on uh, like last night. I saw. Or, Did you watch? No, of course not. But I saw right, some people. Of in them, so people were into it. I saw some clips. <laughs> All right, Logan. So that's Nicole Perlman. But James Gunn. He's he's the real name. He's the he's the franchise guy here. He took up the reins, rewrote the entire script. Multiple times, Logan. And, uh, you know, I, I was interested. I was intrigued by that because I'm a fan of this fella. I was, like, going back. Mm-hmm. I was big I was big into that movie, Slither. You familiar with that? Yeah, familiar. It's got Nathan. Is that Rooker? F- uh, he might be in it. but it's Is the, is the uh, other girl from Walking Dead in that? Other girl from Andrea? Walking Dead. I maybe I don't fucking know. All right, I'm sorry. I asked a question. Yeah, I guess I did say I'm a fan of the movie. I probably should know that stuff. Uh, I but I've only seen it like twice. It was very. good. I go back to Scooby Doo, so way before you. 
<laughs> he has a writing credit on that. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. I think that movie Super is pretty good too. Yeah, the, I never saw that. Yeah, that's worth watching. Um. Anyway, James Gunn. He Belko uh, Belko experiment. That was after this, but yeah, I like that movie yeah, a lot. That, too. That's fine. If you haven't seen that, people. Yeah, that's that a big recommend for me. I gave that like a four or something. Also, I would recommend The Suicide Squad. We'll get there, man. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I, it is weird, though, that, like, the dude who wrote and directed all these Guardians movies, including the new one that's coming out soon, is, like, now in charge of the DC universe. Right. And you can argue the Suicide Squad is better than either of these movies. I can and I will. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. All right. Uh, so he wrote and directed this bad boy. It uh, came out August 1st, 2014. Let's talk about the development of it a little bit, though. Um, they were looking at two other directors, well, t- a directing team and another one. So they looked at Peyton Reed, who they later hired to do Ant-Man, and Anna Bowden and Ryan Fleck, who they later hired to do Captain Marvel. So Marvel knows who they want, man. They want these indie filmmakers that they can steamroll and force to do whatever they want. Coogler feels like they didn't steamroll him that much. Uh, he got steamrolled a bit. <laughs> they steamroll all of them. I don't know, man. What about uh, Chloe Zhao? Taika did too much of what he wanted. Yeah, well, that's eventually, yeah. And uh, Destin Daniel Cretton, he's another what one. What did he's, he do? He did uh, Shang-Chi and he's doing the two newest New Avengers movies. And that dude got his start on, like, short-term 12. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, uh, anyway. They got Gunn. He, he's the one that got picked. Uh, let me tell you about some of the cast, Logan. Our lead in this film is Chris Pratt. You familiar with this guy? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. All right. Now I'm well, This a, was, like, his breakthrough. Really. This was his breakthrough role. But I'm a fan of Chris Pratt going way back, Logan. Yeah, me too, a little bit. Yeah, but uh, back to 2002? No, not quite. Hell yeah. Because I watched a little television series starring Always a Treat, Treat Williams, called Everwood, Logan. And Chris Pratt played the brother of the female lead. His character's name was Bright Abbott. And uh, he was hilarious on that show. And I loved it. And uh, his, his sister was played by uh, Emily Van Camp, who later did Marvel shit, too. Yeah. She was like yeah. Sharon, Sharon something. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> In uh, those Captain America movies. <laughs> Why can't I remember that character's last name? All right. Anyway. What? What do you mean? Who are you talking about? Sharon Carter. I just remembered it. Yeah, she's in the those. Oh, is she the niece? Uh, maybe. Or like, right? She like fucks she them get... in the in the comics, so I don't know. If but but isn't niece. like when she gets old, it's like her niece shows up or something. That might be it. I don't remember. No, she's like she works for Shield and shit, doesn't she? Who's this person you're talking about? Emily Van Camp. You don't yeah, know. Yeah, this is like yeah. She's like in the Winter Soldier. She's like the one that is. Like the niece. There you go. So anyway, Pratt and her, they were bro- they were brother and sister in Everwood. All right. Then Pratt moves on, goes and does season four of the OC, Logan, where he played one of Summer's. The second best season, right? That is my second favorite season. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one of Summer's college buddies. He's a real green eco warrior. He ties himself to a tree at one point, and he goes by the name Che. But then you find out he's a rich kid named Chester. All right. So that was funny. I'm all in on this Pratt fella. Then he shows up on Parks and Recreation, and I'm in love. Yeah. Never all saw right. it. All right. People don't. And he's, he's with. He's with. Uh... God damn it. <laughs> I forgot her name. Catherine Schwarzenegger. No, not in real life. In the in that show, oh, he's with uh, in uh, he's with White Aubrey Lotus. Plaza. <laughs> White Aubrey Lotus. Plaza. Shut the fuck <laughs> up. <laughs> that should not be your go-to Aubrey Plaza reference. I know. Hey, they won uh, best 
cast in a TV no way, something really? at the SAG Awards. Whoa. Yeah. I saw, can I tell you, someone was asking everybody on the red carpet, like, uh, what show would you want to be on if you could be on any show? And what's the girl's name who played, like, the assistant on that show? The assistant on what show? On the White Lotus season two. Oh, Haley Lou Richardson? Yes, everyone was like, oh, succession, succession, severance. I, I want to be on severance. And she was like, I really want to be, I want to really want to spend a day on, on Love Island and see if anybody oh, likes me. Fuck yeah, dude. I would love it if she was on that show. <laughs> that was so they funny. should throw her in as one of the Casa Amor girls. They should do that. Yeah. yeah. That would be very tempting. <laughs> For sure. I would be tempted. All right. So, uh, Chris Pratt, by the time of Guardians of the Galaxy, he turned down the initial audition for it, Logan, because he had come really far in casting on a couple of other movies only to not get them. And he was really disappointed by it. So he's going to give up acting? No, he was just, he just gave up being a leading man. He was comfortable. He played Scott Hattieberg in, in Moneyball. He had a, a plum role on Parks and wanted. Rec. Wanted. That was the first time I ever saw him. Yeah, he shows up he in that. He was Wanted. He was sort of cool just doing that sort of thing. Because apparently he was like a backup for Captain Kirk on star trek like the jj abrams reboot and he didn't get it and Is that, isn't hemsworth his dad also am i wrong yeah, about that that's right wow that's crazy and he came really close also to the sam worthington role in avatar oh all right wow. and they they really went the wrong way with that i would say i uh, t- to be honest watching the i've not seen the second one but the first avatar came out in 2009 and i i remember thinking like it's so wild to work for an entire decade making this movie, like putting everything into it, like all this new technology and shit. And then you ruin it in one fell swoop by casting like a dud as your lead actor. Yeah, I will tell you, you gain such an appreciation for what James Cameron does, or at least I do, on those Avatar movies when you watch something like the Ant-Man Quantumania and yeah. you see just like, no effort put into anything it's just like people standing around they really I, I know you like shit on them and then you say you don't care about it and stuff but there is like a real craft i do appreciate it L- logan i loved the clip that i saw at the end of uh, babylon yeah <laughs> yeah okay yeah, yeah, yeah. very yeah. enjoyable oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah what a i knew i is. knew that would have set you going yeah. in i mean i knew it was coming i people have oh, warned me that? of that yeah oh, okay all right so uh Pratt's agents convinced him, like, come on, man. This is a Marvel thing. These, yeah, these why, you, why are, don't you want to be an actor, These things bro. are going big. Why don't you try it? So he did, and he beat out all the guys. I, I wrote Who down some it? of the other names that were that were in the running. Joel Edgerton. All right? How about Eddie Redmayne? What the hell? I know. That would have been bad. Uh, Zachary Levi, who later Ooh. played the Shazam. That would have been so annoying. Yeah, probably you're right. Also, he's an anti-vaxxer. And then uh, Joseph... Well, isn't Pratt like a Trump well, guy? Well, we'll get there. We'll get there. Okay. <laughs> Joseph Gordon-Levitt was in the running. Oh, oh no. Yeah. All right. I guess he was like, it wasn't enough playing fake Robin in Dark Knight Rises. I got to be in another one of these fucking things. I don't even think Joel Edgerton would be good. And he's second place right now. All right. Uh, Lee Pace... Was oh, in the he's running. the villain. He, yeah, he later he got hired as the villain. He's like he he's way too tall to be Star Lord. Probably isn't he that guy like seven feet tall? No, they just make him look that way. He's, he's, hey Siri, how tall is Lee Pace? He's probably six three. Well, we're about to find out. Lee Pace is six feet five inches. Five? Wow, that is tall. Pretty tall. All right. Uh, Michael Jordan's like six. Five. Is that the first time Siri has actually answered a question you've asked it? I think so. That's the first one that she's been eligible to answer. Yeah, that was very helpful, Siri. Yeah, thanks. Um, but I'll tell you this much. Second place. This was the second place person. It came down to Chris Pratt and one other person. And, uh, you know, James Gunn really liked this guy. Glenn Howerton. The dude who plays Dennis on yeah. It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Interesting. I thought that was interesting. I so, think he's second place. Yeah, I agree. So 
Yeah, people don't like Chris Pratt now because uh, he had like a cute wife and he dumped her for like a sexy Nepo baby. And uh, also he's like, he grew up hunting and shit. So he has like Republican values. He's very pro-gun. I don't know if he was a Trump guy, was he? I'm not sure of that specifically, but... Uh, I feel like he's never <laughs> said he's not. Yeah, yeah. I think it's that kind of thing. Like, he he probably voted for Trump, but he's not going to say it in public because he's Star-Lord. You're right. Yeah. So, and Owen Grady, right? Who's that? <laughs> From Jurassic World. Oh, good call. <laughs> yeah. How do you remember that character's name? It's one of my faves. I love Owen Grady. Huge Owen Grady fan over here. Yeah, yeah. Also, a, this is the year of the Lego movie. This is a big year. That's true. He has the number five and number three movies of the year in 2014. Wow. Amazing. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of people have turned on Chris Pratt. I, But I've been into the dude for like 20 years. So I'm still supportive of him, Logan. All right. Yeah. I mean, he, if he does something, I mean, what, what's he done outside of this type of stuff? Anything good? Can I, can I tell you my favorite Didn't of his performances? Didn't I just mention like a hundred things that were good? But like since that stuff, since since 2014, what's, what, what's, well, what's the he best? done? I mean, I feel like it's just been this type of stuff. I feel like he's really good in Infinity War. <laughs> Is he? I feel like, yeah, that's, spoiler alert, that's the one, if no one has seen Infinity War, turn off the podcast, that's the one where Gamora dies. She, he, like Thanos tosses her off the thing in yeah. order to get one of the stones. And he does a good job after that moment. There's also a moment where she, like, they, they're like, they confront Thanos, but it's like all a dream sequence. But she, she runs the wrong way. And he's like, I told you to run left or I told you to go right. And he's like pissed. And he's good there, too. I feel well, like that's my favorite of his performance. Logan, I liked him in Passengers with Jennifer Lawrence. How about that movie? Did he have an onset thing with Jennifer Lawrence? Uh, who can say? Did that make that up? I don't know. He's also Onward, that Pixar movie, and the Pick Tomorrow on. War. Yeah, he gets cast in all these big fucking That's like an Amazon now. thing. Yeah, I watched it, though. And he's going to mm. be Mario and Garfield. Oh, that was huge, Mario. Yeah. He's Garfield? Yeah, they're also doing re- Garfield reboot, and he's Garfield. Who's who's going to fill the so shoes just think of about, Breckin think Meyer? About, think about Chris Pratt. Think about him, right? Yeah. Imagine him saying, I want lasagna. Right, exactly. Or I hate Monday. <laughs> correct, correct. <laughs> yeah. He's Odin. Say both What's the dog's things. name? Uh, Odie. Odie, get off my cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> now I, I, I see the cast here of the new Garfield. I can't tell you who's playing the Breck and Meyer role, but it might be Nicholas Holt. Oh, it's got to be. Who's Jennifer Love Hewitt? Looks like it could be Hannah Waddingham. I have no idea who that is. She's a Ted Lasso. All right. Have you you watched that? No, right? I've never seen a single second of Ted Lasso. I, I don't know. I You know, I actually considered watching it this week because season three is coming out soon. And I was like, maybe I'll check this shit out. I thought there were going to be like six episode seasons, half hour episodes because it's like British and shit. But it's not, Logan. It's 40 five minute episodes and 12 episode seasons are you fucking Mm. kidding me yeah so instead i started watching season two of la brea we'll talk about it on friday all right yeah well it's bad okay uh anyway that's chris pratt he's he's garfield so by the way I, i just mentioned when gamora died in infinity war i found like a new appreciation for gamora watching these movies i really i didn't yeah, I sort of did, and I never really cared about her that much. And I was sort of upset when I realized she died in Infinity War. But then I have a question. Didn't she come back in Endgame? I have Is no she alive fucking now? idea. I, I, I remember so little about those movies. Yeah, I forget I, who I forget if Nebula is alive. I forget if 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 Gamora is alive. I don't know. I guess I we'll watched, find out. I watched Guardians Infinity 3. War one time in theaters, and it was such a packed theater, and I didn't want to sit in the first row that I sat in the aisle on the floor. Wow. Yeah. Were you negative on that movie? No, I, I liked, liked it. Infinity War. Yeah, I, I like it in game way more though. I like the opposite. I'm more Infinity War guy. 
in in no, I think Endgame has more characters and it's like yeah, it's, it's better over balanced. stuffed. It's fucking three hours. No, long. it's better balanced. The other one, like where you get the Chris Evans like an hour into the movie and then you forget who you're with and then you spend like. 20 minutes with peter like Dinklage, that. like forging oh, yeah. a hammer no, you're right you're right that sucks that's so bad he's the but then, he's the ghost blow job of that movie yeah you're right but then when thor shows up and he's like kicking ass with that new that's awesome yeah that's fun stuff i just didn't need to see that that weapon made all right so you got uh, zoe saldana she's uh your gamora she was second choice for gamora you know who turned it down Helen Mirren. <laughs> no, Amanda Seyfried. Oh, that's good. Yeah. W- wouldn't she be good in a Marvel movie? I'd like to see her in a Marvel movie. Is she in a show, though? Isn't she, like, winning Emmys and shit? Is she? What show is she on? Oh, my God. Hey, Siri, what show is Amanda Seyfried on? Amanda Michelle Seyfried is an American. Oh, Amanda Michelle <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't tell well, me. Well, I that. watched you on Big Love. Oh, you're thinking of the dropout. That was just a mini series, dude. Oh, sorry, dude. Yeah, she played uh, Elizabeth Holmes from Theranos. Um, that was she was really good in that. She's a good actress. I like her a lot. I actually I love her. She's I just great. rewatched uh, Jennifer's Body. I oh, uh, I love so, her in that movie. She, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Needy, right? Needy, that's right. Great name. Yeah. So she turned down Gamora. She didn't want to spend all that time in the makeup chair. And so Are you they serious? Got, yeah, seriously. And so they got in Saldana and she was like, sure, I'll do it. I love doing huge movies. Yeah, I was just an avatar. What yeah. I, and Star Trek. Yo, oh, yeah, you Star think Trek. do you think she threw it in she Chris Pratt? Star Trek? Yo, no. Do you think she threw it in Chris Pratt's face? Yo, I was in Avatar <laughs> and Star Trek. You got shut out of both of those, motherfucker. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. That's crazy. I didn't put that together. Yeah. Yeah. Well. All right. And uh, then you got Batista. By the way, can you name one other thing Sam Worthington has done? Because I really can't. Yeah, he was in Clash of the Titans. Was that before everything? No, that was after Avatar. He got put in a bunch oh. of shit right after Avatar. People tried to make him a movie star, but it didn't pan out because he's such a boring actor. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Um, Batista Logan. Yeah, this was the first movie I ever saw him in. I think it was... Was it the first movie he ever did? Uh, Maybe. He might have done like a WWE produced movie. Yeah, maybe, but, but I don't even know about that. But like, I remember, like, when I saw the trailer, I was like, oh, my... F-. Like, I wasn't watching... I think I was done... I was definitely done watching wrestling at this point. And I was like, fucking... Because Batista's, like, one of, was one of my favorites. And he was going to be in a movie? That was so cool. In a Marvel you were movie? Like, you were like, the animal? Batista's in I this? I walk for miles inside this pit, pit of danger. danger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Classic. All right. And uh, he beat out the second choice, Jason Momoa. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, you did remember that. Interesting. I yeah. didn't know that. Well, I don't, not at the time, but I remember, I do know the story. Okay. Uh, all right. So it comes out August 1st, 2014. I already said that. I, which ha- is, I don't think Batista, uh, Batista could not be Aquaman. So good for, I think that all worked out. Yeah, it worked out for, the, but, but you know what? I don't think Jason Momoa can be Aquaman. <laughs> but, but what else would he do? Just House of the Dragon spinoff. You know what I'm? He's gonna be good in is the new Fast and Furious movie. Yeah, no, that's perfect for him. A villain in a Fast and Furious. Movie. He understands. That's exactly that what Jason Momoa should be doing. It's like yeah. how I always thought Henry Cavill was boring until he played a villain in Mission Impossible. Some of these you, boring, handsome guys just need to do villain roles. Sam Worthington. What do you think? Yeah, throw him in there. I'd love to see what he does with it. It would be boring. All right. Um. <laughs> This movie had a budget of $170 million, but they went over budget, and the fucking thing ended up costing $232.3 million. Wow. So Marvel made a real gamble on this. There were characters people didn't really know about, starring a comedy guy, you know, it, but it, whatever, it did really well. They're going to mention <laughs> Vin and Bradley? They, that happened later, man. They had already like filmed most of the movies when movie when the they they came into it oh wow yeah coop they'd filmed like two-thirds of it and then they hired cooper they just had sean gunn playing him on the set james's brother yeah you know for a long time james gunn was sean gunn's brother to me 
Yeah, really? Yeah, because I was a big fan of Sean Gunn. He played Kirk on Gilmore Girls. All right? He's in every season of Gilmore Girls. Love Kirk, one of the best characters. And so then, like, I was like, oh, Kirk's brother directs movies now. That's neat. Yeah. Uh, But I guess he's superseded his brother in the entertainment industry. Uh, The movie ended up making $773.3 million. Coming in at number three for the year. I said five was the Lego movie. Four was Captain America Winter Soldier, which I'm sure Marvel thought was going to make more than this. Yeah, that's surprising. Yeah. Number two, Hunger Games Mocking J1. And number one, what a weird year, 2014, American Sniper. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So Cooper had the number one and three movies of the year. Cooper, he's like on top of the world. He had like Silver Linings, American Hustle. Yeah. That was 12 and 13. 12 and 13, right into this where he has American Sniper. Shoot. He's like the biggest movie star ever. Yeah, you think about it that way, like, it's no surprise they let him direct now. He, like, really took this this industry by force. Yeah. Is he is he a better director than, uh, than, uh, well, I guess you can't say that. Then who? Well, I was gonna say Ben Affleck. That's no. No? No, he's not. What if he, what if he won Best Director for Star is Born? I I I don't put any stock into the Oscars. To me, you don't. You don't. To I me, think, gone, I think ba- gone baby gone. Stuff like Aff- the NBA. Affleck's first movie, Gone Baby Gone, is better than than anything Cooper's made. All, all about Steve. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> and the uh, Wedding Crashers. Oh, he's so good in Wedding Crashers. Yeah, he is good in Wedding Crashers. <laughs> Wet Hot. You see that he's great in Wet Hot. He too. is so fucking good in Wet Hot. That's right. Yeah. Ben Affleck's I, never done a Wet Hot. You're right about that, man. But I mean, I guess if you want to count those early Kevin Smiths, like Mallrats or whatever. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I've been a Cooper guy for a long time, just like I've been a Pratt guy for a long time. I'm very supportive of the cast of this film. I've been a Batista guy since he was a wrestler. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Saldana, when did I get into her? Maybe, uh, maybe not until really Star Trek. At all, but I, I, I like. Gamora. I gotta be She's honest. Cool. I think Zoe Saldana is a really boring actress. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Okay. Like I've I I've seen Star Trek. I like her in Star Trek, and I like her in this. But it's kind of the same performance. Well, I mean, well, I don't really know anything else she's done to be honest. Besides that cut type Avatar. Of stuff. Yeah, besides that type of stuff. Is well, it... early on in her career, didn't she do like teen movies? I feel like I saw her in like as a. Maybe like the black best friend in some teen movies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let me look it up real quick. All right. Uh I'll look it uh, up too. Eighty one credits. That's a lot. She she sure works. Oh yeah, she does. Crossroads. Get over it. Center stage. Cross yeah, she was Britney Spears' friend in Crossroads. See? She was in a few of those. And then I She's saw in her Pirates as- of the Caribbean. I think I remember that. They did the remake of Guess Who's Coming to Dinner with Bernie Mac and Ashton Kutcher, and she played Ashton Kutcher's fiance in that. All right. So that's a big role. Big time role. I rented that. All right. (sighs) Let's get into it, Logan. Oh, how about the awards? This movie was nominated for a lot of awards. Yes. I had to write all this shit down this morning. It took fucking forever. All right. How about the Oscars? It was nominated for Oscars. It lost most of the awards it was nominated for, by the way. It was like one of those movies that got a shit ton of nominations, but it won almost nothing. Uh, MTV. Oh, well, let's start with the Oscars. Makeup and Hair it was nominated for. It lost to Grand Budapest Hotel. And it was nominated for Visual Effects. And it lost to Interstellar. All right. Then the exact same thing happened at the BAFTAs. It lost the same awards to the same movies. I think that makes sense. Yeah. All right. Let's hear that MTV theme. I want my MTV. (laughs) Very good. All right. Nominated for it was the most nominated movie that year at the MTV Movie Awards, but it didn't win a single award. Oh, my God. Yeah. It lost best movie to The Fault in Our Stars. Oh, have I you know. seen that? No, I haven't. Okay. 
But like, yeah, that's, that's probably a weird movie to go watch. It's uh, Shailene and Ansel Elgort. Yeah, they Aren't were they both all sort of canceled a little bit. Shailene. Don't they she, both have like have weird views on? Yeah, things? but Shailene's just a hippie. She like and forages Ansel, her own like, food. Is he a predator or something? Yeah, Ansel's a predator. <laughs> yeah. For sure. And she like, didn't she like, when COVID came, well, also she dated, she dated fucking Aaron Rodgers for a long time. Yeah. It yeah, really takes engaged. predatoring to get me to like fall out on somebody. Like Chris Pratt can vote for Trump as much as he wants, but Woody. until he, until he rapes somebody, I'm, I'm still going to watch his movies. Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. All right. Uh, he lost Best Actor, by the way, to his co-star Bradley Cooper, who won for American Sniper. And uh, Cooper and Diesel, they were nominated for Best On-Screen Duo, and they lost to Zac Efron and Dave Franco in the first Neighbors. We'll have to wow. cover those someday. Yeah, that, aren't there three of them, though? I've thought about just it. Just two, but I think just two. No, I think there's a third one. There's not. It's Neighbors 2, Sorority Rising. You cannot tell me there's a third Neighbors movie. I would have seen it. I I, th- I think that you're going to be in for a treat. Look up Neighbors 3. I guarantee you. I will bet you any amount of money. Uh, Well, am I wrong? You're fucking wrong on this one, bro. It's not pulling up where... Uh... Mm-hmm. Mm, maybe I'm wrong. All right. Chris Pratt nominated for Best Comedic Performance of the Year in this. He lost to Channing Tatum for 22 Jump Street. Uh, the movie was nominated for Best Musical Moment at the uh, the beginning. Which one? The so be- many good moments. I, the beginning, the opening. Yeah. And uh, But that lost, too, to... Uh, that part in Mocking J One where Jennifer Lawrence sings that little song, <laughs> and she whistles. I guess so. What? No, she has a couple lyrics in that song. Oh, I thought you meant when she does that. Do 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 do. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I do. No, th- th- there's like a little ballad about about the homeland that she sings at one point. Oh wow, I don't yeah. remember that. All right, Zoe Saldana was nominated for Best On Screen Transformation, which I didn't know was a thing. And she lost to Elizabeth Banks for Mockingjay. And uh, Chris Pratt nominated for Best Hero of the Year. And he lost to Dylan O'Brien for The <laughs> Maze Runner. Wow. I feel like they would take that back. Yeah, I think Mar- MTV was on the wrong side of history that year. They, they were yeah. still all in on like the, the Twilight Hunger Games tween crowd. Right. Yeah. All right. Kids' Choice Awards. The KCA slogan. Nominated for best, they were all in on Hunger Games. Still, the kids they lost best movie to Mockingjay. Saldana lost female action star to Jennifer Lawrence. Pratt this is lo- the first Mockingjay. Yeah, Pratt lost male action star to Liam Hemsworth. <laughs> oh, yeah, can you believe that? What's and, his character's name? Uh, I don't remember. Oh, I think it's something I, good. Yeah, it is something good. All the names in that movie are good. Yeah, you're right. Who may who wrote those books? Uh, Susanna something. No way. <laughs> I believe so. <laughs> All right, Lee Pace. He was Gail. Out- His name's Gail. That's good. Thank you. Yeah, Lee. What was the other one's name? Who the the author? No, no, the little boy. Peter. Yeah, Peter. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Lee Pace was nominated for best villain. He lost to Angelina Jolie for Maleficent. Holy shit. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the People's Choice Awards. They sure make the choice. Uh, It lost Best Movie to Maleficent and Best Action Movie to Divergent. All right? Yeah, Divergent. Divergent. Cover those, too. Doesn't have an ending. All right, then the Saturn Awards. This is the only awards voting body that recognized Guardians as something to be something special. All right? Best comic to film, which was a new category at the time. They were like, God, they're really they're making movies out of every fucking comic book. Let's make that a category. Uh, and it won. Mm-hmm. It won that award. James Gunn won best director of the year, Logan. 
Beating, out everybody. Beating out such greats as Inuritu for Birdman or the unexpected virtue of ignorance. Fincher for Gone Girl. I don't think he was nominated. It, he, no. it's, it's not really a genre movie. Um, but I think uh, L- Doug Lyman for Edge of Tomorrow was in there. Some other big ones. All right. And maybe uh, maybe even Christopher Nolan, I think, for Interstellar. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, because he won Best Writing, which Guardians was nominated for. Chris Pratt won Best Actor of the Year, Logan, beating Michael Keaton and and other luminaries, other potential. Probably close- maybe Hugh Jackman, Chris Evans. Yep, yep, all those guys. Yep. All right, it lost Best Editing to Edge of Tomorrow. It lost Best Production Design to Interstellar. It confusingly, it lost Best Costumes to Dracula Untold which is a movie I barely even remember existing. No. Yeah. And uh, lost visual effects to Interstellar, and it won Best Makeup. All right. Congratulations. Lots of nominations. So many nominations. I hope that segment wasn't too boring. It bored me. But maybe it's better if you don't know the answers. Okay. (laughs) So, 1988. That's when this movie opens. It's also when the show La Brea takes place, partly. (laughs) By the way, this is the 10th MCU film. Do you want to hear what they made before this? Oh, God. I mean, I I could probably name them all. Go in order. I have to go in order? Yeah, I could do it. I thought about it before I I did it. Iron Man, The Incredible Hulk, Iron Man 2. All right, that's the first three, right? Yep. All right, then... I'm going to say Captain America, the first Avenger. No. All right. What, what is it? Thor, then the Captain America. Okay. Thor, then Captain America, the first Avenger. That's five. What's next? I want to say the Avengers. Yep. All right. Then. Three more. Three more. Thor, the Dark World. Nope. Iron Man 3. Then uh, Thor, right. the Dark World. Okay. All then right. Then what? Then this. Then Winter Soldier, then this. Yep. That's oh. right. Yeah. Okay. I, I did all right. This is phase two. <laughs> Fuck off with that. I I can't I can't talk about that. Anytime anyone talks about it, like now, nah, oh, you know what's not very good is phase five. It's it's. I it's, think that just started. It's weaker five. than the previous phases. Actually, I have no idea. I'm like, uh, leave me alone with that shit. Like phase one makes sense, I guess. Like you're trying something new, but like now it's just the the movies, the Marvel movies. Yeah, right. Yeah. All right, it's 1988, and it's a Marvel movie, so we've got to have a parental figure dying. In this case, it's a mom with brain cancer, and it's implied that his dad is dead, too. So the mom dies. She says, hold my, take my hand, and he doesn't, like a little yeah, piece why of not? shit. Because she's bald. It's scary. <laughs> did, you, did you recognize that kid, by the way? No, who is it? He's the Jewish kid from It. You know how there's like five or six of them? He's the Jewish one. Yeah, all right. I only saw that movie once on an illegal streaming service. So, <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. You know, we'll have to cover those someday. Uh, but then I'll have to watch It 2 again. Jesus Christ. I've seen the first one like four times, probably. You're the right age for it. Yeah. I think so. I, I think that movie like teens like 21 when it. it came out. Yeah, well, you know. Learning to drink while going to see the clown movie worked <laughs> out. Uh, all right. Then it's 26 years later. Well, he gets abducted, right, by aliens. You see right. that happen, right? And then it's 26 years later. We're on a planet called Morag. Morag. I wrote down all the useless names of the planets. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I've got them. Xandar. You know? Yeah. Um, by the way, we transition from the abduction of Peter, his name is Peter, right? Yep. Uh, into the Marvel logo and we don't have, it's not like the, the normal MCU logo. Did you like that? Well, it it was the norm. It was the normal MCU logo at the time, 
but not like the MCU MC. Like that was just like the normal Marvel. Like right. they had like the comic strips. That's now way it's like, better. I hate that they've changed it to be clips from the fucking movies. Like it's, yeah, now it's like the MCU. Now you version. see like fucking Anthony Mackie walking around and shit. <laughs> <laughs> You know, yeah. show me, show me the comic guys. They, I think they should do it like <laughs> for every character, like have a different Marvel logo. Like they should have shown clips from like the, the Black Panther was good. The second the Black Panther one, it was all Chadwick one, and it was all quiet. And you're like, oh man, I forgot he died. Not really, because you're watching Black Panther. Too, yeah, I, I didn't forget he died for <laughs> a know, single second, and that movie never lets you forget that he died for a single second. But that was pretty good. I did that one. Yeah, it was alright. All right. Show me clips from the comic. I agree. It was nice to see it here. Yeah. All right. So Pratt, you know what I forgot? I I forgot that they're not together at the start of this movie. Oh yeah, really? Yeah. For some reason, I I thought that we didn't go through all the origin shit, but we do. No, no. He's uh, he's on a planet to steal an orb. And it's he's- basically the start of Raiders. But funny version. Yeah, but you know, the start of Raiders doesn't really tie into the rest of Raiders. It's just it's more like a cold open. I guess so. And uh, so I thought that was going to be the case with this too. But then that orb is really important in the movie. Yeah, he is, he leaves with it, and it's a big plot device. Yeah, yeah, it's sort of the MacGuffin. Did you did you man Hun Hunsu comes after him? Digimon Hansu, yeah, that's right. Deep from, Rising. <laughs> I was just going to say that. <laughs> yeah, or Sinke from uh, Amistad. But uh, yeah, he, he gets away with the orb. Uh, what's his face isn't happy. Which Michael Rook, that? the Rook. Oh, yeah. He's, he's friends with Gun, right? Yeah. He's in like all of his stuff. I think they've done multiple things together. But I think at this point, he was probably best known for fucking Walking Dead. Yeah, but I I always think of him as Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. Right, yeah, you would think of that. Yeah, or even, he's in Mallrats. <laughs> okay. He's the villain in Mallrats. Whoa, spoilers. What? It's not a spoiler. He's in like the first scene. All well, right. I've never seen it. Well, whatever. I, it's spoilers to tell you who's in a movie? I don't really look things up. I would just watch it, and then when I started, I'd be like, oh, that's cool. He's the villain. All right. Sorry, so I ruined that it. for you. God damn. I, I spoil a movie that's fucking 30 years old at this point. All right. So, uh, Terra, right? That's where we live. <laughs> it's Earth? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, right. All right. But first, we set up the villains. You see Ronan the Accuser, and he's on a Cree warship. The Kree are an alien race that fought the Skrulls in the comics, but they had already been introduced to the Marvel Universe, Logan, on the television program Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Okay. Remember that show? I remember. I watched like two and a half seasons of that. How many did they make? Seven. Holy shit. Yeah. All right. Uh... There's also Nebula. Nebula and Gamora. They're hanging out with Ronan. And they're Thanos' daughters. Thanos, whatever. Right. So R- Ronan is going to get the orb for Th- Thanos. Thanos. And he doesn't really know why. He's just going to go get it so that he can destroy Xandar. Because he hates Xandar. Because Xandar like, killed his family, basically. Yeah. So he's like, I- I'm going to go work for Thanos. And Thanos, his daughters, adopted daughters are nebula and gamora and he like lent them out to him to be like use them as like weapons and go get the mission done nebula of course is a nebo baby because she's thanos's daughter a good job thank you i just i wrote that joke down i never write jokes down but that was too good to pass up logan it was going and uh she's played by karen gillen who later was in those jumanji movies (laughs) yeah yeah. Well, what else did she done? People were like excited for her career. Be- she was in Doctor Who. That was her big thing. She was like Doctor Who's sidekick for a while. Yeah. Okay. Why? Well, that, that's that's why she got cast and shit like this. But, but like uh, since this, what has she done? Jumanji. Yeah, I know. What? 
you think like she was gonna have a bigger career than Jumanji? People were like, "Oh, she's good," and uh, I'm excited she's fine. for her. I'm just telling you what people you know, are saying. You know, and then... She actually is good. She's funny. And I don't know. This movie does not use her well at all. Neither does the next one, frankly. No. She has a moment I really don't like in the next one. Here, I looked it up. She was in that Apatow movie, uh, The Bubble, which was bad. She was in that Call of the Wild movie where Harrison Ford's hanging out with that cartoon dog. Is she the dog? The voice of the dog? <laughs> no. It's, that would be great, though. Uh, she's in uh, Stuber. Oh my god, with, uh, I saw that. I don't remember. With Batista and uh, Kumail. Yeah. What a career. What a career for Karen Gillan. <laughs> Let's see what her upcoming shit is. She's going to be in Guardians of the Galaxy 3. <laughs> okay, so she's alive. <laughs> that answers the question. Yeah, she's she's around. Oh yeah, that's right. You, you didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. She's got an upcoming TV show. Yeah, that, maybe that's where she belongs. A nebula? A Nebula show or no, just she's no, in a show? No, no, she, no. She's in a show. Oh, okay. God, how boring would a fucking yeah, Nebula really? show be? Jesus. Really? It, it would almost be like if Anthony Mackie got his own TV show. Oh, wait, he did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I liked uh, Wyatt Russell in that. Yeah, but come on. I know. I know. How, what are the good Marvel TV shows? Uh, Scarlet Witch. Or- yeah, Scarlet. Yeah, WandaVision. WandaVision and Loki. Loki? I could name a couple I liked more than Loki. What, the, what else? I really liked WandaVision. That's my favorite. If I had to, any, Everything else can go, honestly. I liked Miss Marvel. WandaVision was actually really good, I thought. It was okay. I, I watched Miss Marvel. I, I think none of them are better than a three, but WandaVision, Miss Marvel, and I think She-Hulk. Those were the ones I liked. Oh, I don't watch that either. Yeah, that was a fun one. A lot of people hated it, but what are you going to do? A lot of incels. A lot of in- misogynistic incel pieces of shit not enjoying the green lady. But I liked it because I read the comic and it's pretty close to the comic. All right. So, Ronan wants to destroy Xander. No, not the character from Buffy. A planet. <laughs> It's sort of like because it's called Xandar. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, all the planets in this movie just look like fucking Star Wars prequel planets to me. Yeah, this this yeah. I, yeah like I, I, I feel like this one was like the one where the Jedi Council was right. Is and, it Coruscant? Yeah, Coruscant. And then at the beginning, when he's like getting the orb, I feel like that's the planet where Anakin. Uh, you know, dies or whatever. Oh, Mustafar. That's the lava planet? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Looked like that to me. Um, all right, anyway. Rocket, <laughs> Raccoon, we meet him, and Groot. His yeah, sidekick. they're best pals. They're, and they're, and they're like Han Solo and Chewie. Are, are they? Rocket is Han Solo? They, like, talk to each other, and he understands him. Groot is definitely for sure Chewie. Like he under- he- they understand each other. It's like this exact same no, dynamic. No, no, I know. It's the same dynamic, but like I don't know that Rocket Raccoon is a rogue. All right, well, sorry I said was. It. But fuck off. But Groot is is like exactly Chewy. Yeah, right. Yeah. So Gamora wants that orb, uh, and Rocket and Groot want to get Chris Pratt because he's got a bounty on his head. All right. right. Rooker put a bounty on his head because he took the orb and bounced instead of bringing it back to him, I think. Yeah. Like that. Put a fucking bounty on his head. Logan. Not to kill him, and but it, just and to And in the second back. movie, we're supposed to like get teared up that like he's such a great father figure for this guy? Well, he he doesn't put a kill bounty. It's like, hey, bring him back safely, bounty. And even at that point, people were like, hey, why are you always taking it so easy on this kid? And then in the next movie, that's another plot point where they're like, they like overthrow him because he takes it so easy. On, it takes too it much, easy of, on too him. much of a face turn for Rooker in the next one. I think I I didn't buy it. Really? I mean, yeah. even right here, he put, he says, bring him back safely. But don't don't kill him. He wants bounty hunters to go get him. To go get him, not kill him. Uh, he wants him back safely, not like put in prison or something. I think he just wants that orb. Exactly. He cares more about the orb than he does his adopted son. He sp- I specifically remember him saying, like, bring it back safely. 
I don't remember that at all. Well, I do, because I remember their dynamic, and I was watching very closely. All right, anyway. Uh, Quill goes to try and sell the orb, but he can't sell it because the sell the buyer is like, no, I don't want to fuck around with Thanos. Yeah, fuck that shit. Thanos, James Gunn didn't want Thanos in the movie. That was forced on him by Marvel. Yeah, you can tell. You really can tell. <laughs> I forgot uh, sort of how sloppy this movie is a little bit. Yeah. You know what else? I hate the special effects. Not sloppy, but forced, kind of. I hate the you special do? effects in both these movies. Um, I'm, oh, in I'm, general? Yeah, I'm so sick I like it sometimes. I'm sick of CGI. I am absolutely disgusted by it. Because there's so many shots in this movie, like, where there's nothing real. Like, they didn't film anything of it. Like, you're just watching a cartoon. Mm -hmm. And I don't like cartoons, all right? I'm an adult. But he shoots it interestingly. Why? He's not shooting anything. Yes, he is. He's directing. He's saying, hey, put the camera here. We're going to do this. We're going to shoot it how they, we're going to shoot it. We're going to shoot. Like when, when, when Yondu is like killing everybody with those, uh, with his little arrow at the end and they're shooting everything from like overhead and there's like night, not time. He's doing it. He's doing it differently. I like James Gunn. He's a talented filmmaker. I think once they're like on the ship or in the prison where like that was actually a set that was built, everything looks a lot better. But, like, there's so much shit. Like, I mean, it's gone down the tubes even worse because I saw that quantum mania and they're just acting out ahead of a green screen the entire fucking Yeah, they're movie. literally just like walk from here to here and talk. It's, yeah, I, I hate that movie kind of. Yeah, but in, he's at least trying, but I don't know. Some of it looked terrible to me. I think the special effects are kind of better in the first one than the second one, too. Like, yeah, have, have special effects gotten worse in the last 10 years? We just, they just churn it out. They've, they've just become, like, they do, instead of, like, three a year, they try to do, like, eight every two years. Like, they, they try to, well, like... Not, not for to, long, like, dude. Because uh, Bob Iger, he took back control of Disney. And uh, he he's saying, he's making it a mandate that they can't make that many of these anymore. So they're canceling some of Yeah, they're just working the, less on them. They're canceling some of the... No, 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 no. This is brand new. Brand new. They're canceling some of the TV shows that they all had announced, and they're going to like go back down to like two of these a year, maybe. And he's doing the same thing with like uh, Star Wars. They're going to do less of that shit, too. Yeah. Um, Keep great. that quality control going. And he's going to give back more control to the creators than the producers which thank god yeah he should have done that before uh like when Raimi came back it wasn't bob Iger in charge they were still money machines back then yeah you're right yeah all right uh so they get they go to prison all of them all four of those characters all right yeah, they're in their cells like pratt flips them off that was a big moment yeah they're arrested by John C. Riley, <laughs> who's not really given anything to do in this movie. No, and Glenn Close. Glenn Close is wasted. They're like, like the only fun thing about her is her hair. I guess so. They're not even the second one either, are they? Did you notice that in all the Glenn Close scenes, she's just got some hot lady taking notes next to her? No, I didn't. What's going on with that lady? It's like a uh, assistant. I guess so, but I like they should make her like a little alien or something. Like it's just a hot lady. What would you, you'd rather have an alien than a hot lady? Yeah, like show me you're in the Nova Corps. Like it should be like uh like the Jedi Council. Like give it make it some guy with like a giant head or something. Yeah, all right. I'd I'd rather have the hot lady. You didn't even notice her. You wouldn't yeah, notice if it was a dude with a giant head. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. I rest my case. <laughs> All right. So they're in the prison. That's where they meet uh, Drax, which is uh, Batista. And also in the prison, Lloyd Kaufman, the head of Troma Studios. Wow. It's very also exciting in the to prison, see him in a cameo. Nathan he, Fillion. Is he? He plays like a... The the character that Groot like picks up and they, they like bully and they're like, this, we're going to be the kings of this place. Holy shit. I didn't even that know Nathan that. Fillion. 
But uh, I, I was excited for Lloyd Kaufman because James Gunn got his start working for Troma. And and so it was like, oh, it's like his it's his father figure. And he came. I took a horror movie class in college. He came to talk to the class. Logan. Wow. What did, what did he have to say? Told us all about low budget filmmaking and shit. It was very interesting. Wow. And I uh, went on to use none of that information. Okay. Yeah. All right. So they got to get out of prison, right? The whole thing, though, is like they realize that uh, Gamora, she's like, I was going to bring this to Ronan, but actually I was going to sell it to a third party guy that you guys don't know about. So, So that's why Peter keeps her alive is because she can sell the orb. And then Drax keeps her alive because if because then Ronan is going to come for her and and then he's going to kill Ronan because Ronan killed his family, right? Right. I forgot about all that shit. Drax oh, really? like had a dead wife and daughter and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's a Marvel character. I should have known. Yeah, you should have known that. But I thought it was sort of crazy that Gamora like reveals the information that hey, I was going to I was going to betray my guy and sell it to a third party to these guys she just met in prison. I thought that seemed a little far fetched, like revealing your whole plan to these guys you're against. No, basically. no, for sure. That's the part of Guardians of the Galaxy that feels far fetched. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Yeah. All right. They get out. I thought this was the funniest part of the movie. Yeah, this is fun. When um, Rocket Raccoon, he says, I need a battery and that guy's false leg. Mm-hmm. And he goes and Pratt gets the false leg, and then when he hands it to Rocket, he said he was just joking about that part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that made me laugh a lot. Um, all right, so what's our... Oh, and he goes back in for the Walkman. That's another part of this movie. Chris Pratt... Everyone knows this shit. Chris Pratt has a Walkman. He's really into this one mix that his mom made him as a kid. He's just listening to the same... It's like pretty good. She had 20- good taste. Yeah, I mean, no deep cuts. It's all hits. For a movie, though, she really knew what she was doing. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It works well as a soundtrack. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, well, we're hooked on a feeling, Moon Age Daydream. What are some of the other ones? Uh, Come and get your love. Yeah, right, that's at that's the beginning, one. right? Yeah. Yeah. What else? Probably a lot of them. I feel like that's a trick. Pina Colada? I remember that one. Yeah, yeah. Escape, it's actually called. Oh, shit. That's, <laughs> That's a great song. I like that yeah. song. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, I, I just feel like it's cheap to me. It's probably expensive, actually, because it costs a lot of money to get all those songs. <laughs> but it's cheap because it's just like, oh, that song. I like that. And then you but like it's not the as movie. cheap as, the, as uh, Suicide Squad, where... Because this is actually it's like... the in, same thing! It, no, it's not. It's extremely different. This is in, within the movie. It's an actual, he cares about this thing that was given to him by his mom and he listens to the music. That's just, hey guys, listen to this song we're putting on in the background while while uh, the guy who does flames does sit-ups. Listen to Eminem. That's, yeah. extra, that's way different. It's the same thing. No, it's not. It's a di- what's diegetic versus non diegetic. Yeah, that yeah, thing? that's that's different, but so that's what I'm talking but about. But it has the same effect. Like James Gunn knows this works, so he's just gonna do it in all his movies now. I was talking about the first Suicide Squad, but also the second Suicide Squad. Oh, the first Suicide Squad. Holy shit. Yeah, but the second Suicide Squad does it too. But um, the, the what was I gonna say? Oh, he goes back in to get the Walkman. Because they leave without it at first. That's when they play the Pina Colada song. Right. That's a little much for me. That's not uh, far-fetched, him going back into the prison just to get his fucking Walkman? He's got to show how much he cares about it. But why? Previously, is... it was just a thing he was listening to. But now it's like, oh, this is... It matters. Because it's from his mom, I guess. But he's also got a tape deck in the the spaceship. So he doesn't Wait, even what? need the Walkman. What does but I guess mean? the tape What's is tape in there? deck? That's a thing you can play tapes on. But it, that has the tape in it. If he doesn't have a tape, what's he yeah, going to do? Yeah, I, I know. I realized that after I said it. All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So they, uh, next stop, they go to Nowhere, 
which is Where spelled with a K. They went somewhere, surely. No, it's no. Don't call me Shirley. I thought you were going to say. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> That's just because you watched Airplane yesterday for the first yeah. time. <laughs> All right. So uh, they're going to sell it to this fellow, the collector, who's played by Benicio del Toro, who also has pretty much nothing to do in this movie. Um, and, but, you know, their plans get foiled by Ronan and his people. Yeah. Because. Because Drax goes outside and he sends a signal like, hey, we're right here because he wants Ronan to come find him so he can kill him. Oh, so then everybody, right. yeah, they come interrupt. And then there's a big battle. I like the part where he gets drunk the night before. Yeah, with Rocket where he's like, stop calling me a little raccoon. Yeah, that's fun. There's good dynamics. That's kind of the strength of these movies. Yeah, for sure. Like the five main guys. Like, I mean, Groot is just like, he says, I am Groot a million times. But like Cooper, Pratt, Saldana, and Batista have nice chemistry. Yes. And Mantis in the next one. Mm, I didn't really feel it until uh, the holiday special. Yeah, I kind of agree, but watch, watching it back, I like Mantis and Batista. I think they're nice together. You, Mantis and Batista, yeah, they they have all right chemistry, but, but it's a lot of just Batista calling her ugly. Well, it's a lot. They're mostly split up. It's like Mantis and Batista are together in that one. Nebula and Gamora are together in that one. Pratt is with his dad. Yeah, and that uh, shit doesn't work. Rocket that, that's is a with thing. Yondu. That's a thing that works well on television in a serialized medium. You can separate characters and have them, uh, you know, embark on their own storylines. In Isn't a that movie. Empire? Luke goes off the train. Uh, they go off to the it's just cloud Luke. place. Yeah, and I guess there's it. only two storylines there. That's it. It's just two. Yeah. yeah and sorry. then they converge at the end. I'm sorry. I don't know. It, it, to me, I, mean, I agree, but like Star Trek Beyond did this. Did you see that one? No. Is that the third one? Third one. Yeah. No. And I bought it a little more just because Star Trek has its roots in TV. You know, so like. You can kind of do that. It felt weird. It felt it made the second movie feel more fractured to me. And it's why I prefer the first movie, because it's kind of just one simple story that it's very easy to follow, too. Like, it's a complicated plot, but it's told pretty simply. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Then we get it's a bunch of big battles. That's the rest of the movie. Really? That's it? (laughs) I mean... The, the Nova Corps get involved, but we learn all... about Infinity Stones for the first time ever in Marvel. Gives I think, a shit. Right? Yeah, I guess we've talked about that right a little bit. I just don't or care. Like the Infinity Stones, it's it, it doesn't work for me that it's here. Well, I mean, it's a big part of Marvel. <laughs> I think we. Uh, it's not a big. It. It's not a big part of Marvel. The MCU that they set up in the movies that we're covering today, we have to at least mention it. There, so there you go. I, Infinity Stones. Which one is this? Do you know? It's the Power Stone. Oh, okay. And uh, the only thing that w- that works in the context of the film with the Infinity Stone is that Pratt is able to hold it. And that's how you know like he's only half human. He's got some weird shit going on in him. Uh, right. But that's mostly set up for the next movie. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, that's good setup. Do you like that when he dances at the end? Something. Who dances? Things are going to get... When Pratt dances and he distracts him so they can beat him. Or oh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's nice. They they love I mean, that, Kevin that, Bacon. That only works because of Chris Pratt. Right. I can't imagine... Yeah, like, imagine, imagine Ryan Reynolds doing that scene. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Eddie Redmayne. Oh, my God. Imagine Zachary Levi trying uh, to do that. I can, I can imagine the... Uh, it's always sunny guy doing it. Yeah, he would be good, I'm telling you. <laughs> All right. Um, so what about... Uh, what else happens at the end? What else so, To be honest, this is when my Chinese food came and I stopped taking notes. <laughs> oh, wow. I understand. I, I, I sort of have a question. You said you forgot about the Drax and like the whole... Uh, his family and everything. Um, he says Ronan killed his killed his family but then ronan dies and then at the end he tells gamora like ronan was really just like the mouthpiece it was really like thanos is the big bad guy so now i have to go kill thanos so 
Iron Man. Spoilers for Avengers Endgame. If nobody has seen that one. Iron Man. Kill. He says, I am Iron Man. Snaps. Kills uh, kills uh, Thanos, right? You remember that? No. All right. Well, that happened. Yeah. Cut. Rewind a few years ago. That happened. How long ago was that? Five years ago at this point? Something like yeah. that? Yeah. Four years ago? Um, so Iron Man kills. I... I it's a, that's a good moment when Iron Man kills him, but I sort of think that Iron Man creating, like going back in time, was kind of enough. I I kind of would have liked if Drax killed Thanos. It's Downey's last movie; they wanted to give him the big heroic ending. I understand that, like, and it's the way they kill him. Also, is that's also true. That's how he dies. That's like literally how he dies: is he snaps and dies. I don't remember. These movies aren't rewatchable. That. <laughs> They're not rewatchable to me. Like I, I've, se- I've seen them all. I see times. them once, and then they go out of my head. Here's the ones I can rewatch, I think. All three Iron Man movies. Oh, the second one is really bad. It's I think. fun, though. I don't think so. Uh, I could rewatch the Spider-Mans. Yeah. At least the first two. Um, Is that it? Really? That might be it for me, man. Ant-Man and the Wasp? I did rewatch it, and it held up all right, but like, you, how many times do you need to see that? Black Panther? Meh. Any of the Thors? Caps? No, I like, and Strangers. I like those. Winter Soldier's a really good movie. I think Thor, the third one, Ragnarok, is that what it is? Yeah. I think that's really good, but no, I, one is enough for me. Like I, it's not like I used to reread comic books that much. You read right. you, the next month, you get the next issue. Right. I, I've seen them all. I've seen them all at least a few times. That's wild. Except for the newest, like six or seven. <laughs> sure. Uh, all right. What, what? Tell me about We Are Groot. Uh, what about it? That's a nice moment. Yeah. Do you realize, by the way, it's a different Groot when he comes back? It took me until like the second movie came out until I realized that. Yeah, of course. It's like Groot's son, baby Groot. I thought he was like, he just grew from like a tiny twig. Oh, you thought he like regenerated? Like he he was in the process of regenerating. Yeah, that's interesting. No. Different Groot. Different Groot. Yeah. He's cute though when he's a little baby. Dude, he is fucking cute. I Do re- they call him Baby Groot? Yeah. Is Baby Yoda literally a Baby Groot ripoff? I mean, what? just cute things have always been around these movies. Disney loves cute. Yeah, but it's Baby Groot. And then like two years later, they're like, meet Baby Yoda. Remember him? Grogu, This my is friend. the baby. His version. name is Grogu. Yeah, but we didn't know that for <laughs> a few know, seasons. I know. But, uh. Yeah, I guess maybe you're right. You know, they they wanted Groot to be back full grown in the second one, but then Baby Groot was such a hit. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize it was between movies. Yeah. That's why they made it only take place like a couple months after the first one. I I love the Groot in the next movie. Yeah, so he's, cute. he's adorable. I love that opening. You might not like I it. I hated but... when when Oh, I hate the opening. But <laughs> No, I like parts of the opening, but I I very much like the part where they're bullying him on the spaceship. No, ma- it's so sad when he's like walking to the oh, prison cell. All yeah, oh. poor little Groot. Yeah, how are the ducks in this one? He's in both of them. Oh, sorry, but he in the post credit scene here. I'm looking. Yeah, uh, I, I like- popped for that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a big Howard the Duck fan. He was voiced by Seth Green in this. Did you know that? No, I did not know that. Yeah, I, I looked it up. Are you talking about... Uh, you talking, trying talking to remember about... his Buffy character? Yeah. Did they say it? <laughs> it's Oz. Oz, you told me that, right? Yeah. Um, all right. I feel like this is... I feel like I've... I don't know. I like the characters in this. I feel like they do a good job with the characters. I don't think it's always that funny. There's like one line where... Where Peter Quill is like, yeah, if only they had like a black light, if you could only see the. I like job. that line. Oh, I don't like that. That's no, like the, one of the worst. Lines I remember the first time. Yeah, he says, uh, "If you had a black light in here, it would look like a Jackson Pollock painting." 
And I remember when I watched this for the first time, I didn't see in theaters. I saw it on DVD. I, uh, I loved that line because it just felt like a line none of the other Marvel movies would ever say. And I was like, oh, so this one's a little different. It's a little quirkier. I like that. Um, I don't know. By the second movie, it's just a Marvel movie. Okay. Um, I sort of feel like the Thanos stuff and the Ronin stuff is pretty bad. Like all the villain stuff is pretty bad. All the spat. By the way, the end battle is like we don't want to let him touch the ground, so it's like build a force field. That's lame. Yeah, I, I forgot about that ending. And it, it goes on too long. Ronan is not that interesting a villain. I think Lee Pace is fine in the role, but yeah. like whatever. That's that's a big problem with these Marvel movies. A lot of them don't have a good enough villain. Yeah, yeah, that's been talked about forever. I know. Quantumania, it's like the reverse. It's like everything else sucks except the villain. Um, yeah. I mean, who are the best villains? Michael Keaton, Michael B. Jordan, all the Michaels. Yeah, I only hire Michaels from now on. Yeah, right. What are the other? Michael Bean, bring him out of retirement, make him a villain. Who's Michael Bean? <laughs> from like, Ali- from like, uh, oh, uh, but yeah, that guy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, what? Is that guy dead? Uh, I have no idea, actually. Michael Bean. Is Siri. <laughs> no, I think it's like, is it Michael B I A N or something? By like B I E H N, I think. Oh shit! Oh yeah, you're right. No, he's. I guess he's alive. All right. You share a birthday with him, July thirty first. Wow! Amazing. Wow. Nineteen fifty six. So he's thirty years older than you. Um. Yeah. Well, look you know what the that. problem with Marvel is? Is like all the best villains are X Men or Spider Man villains, and they're not allowed to use the X Men villains. And all the Spider Man ones have been done already. Yeah, right. Um, I sort of feel like this is a three and a half. What do you feel? Um, well, I'm not a coward, so I don't give half stars. I think it's a four for a Marvel movie. I think it's a three for a movie. Yeah, that's kind of what I would think. Yeah, yeah. So what are you? What are you gonna do? I'm giving. I don't know. I have it as a four on Letterbox, but that seems high to me. I might go down to three. I don't know. I really don't know. I feel like it's a three and a half. Mm, well, what do I do? What do I do? That's up to you. I'm going to give it a four. You give it a four? All right. That's fine. And who's your MVP? My MVP, I have a few names. I, Gamora, I really liked Gamora. Get out of here. I li- I liked her. I thought she was good. I liked the end when the music's playing and she's like dancing and, and Peter's like, ooh, she's dancing. Uh, I like that. Uh, Drax, I have written down. thought Drax was really funny in this movie. And Rocket Raccoon. Yep. As far as I'm concerned, Drax and Rocket Raccoon are the choices. And I'm going to go Batista. Wow, Batista in his first big movie gets the MVP. Yeah. I'll go Batista too, because I think Rocket is even better in the second movie. I don't. I don't like how he's so angry in the second one. He's a little bit lighter on his feet in the first one. Well, he's angsty. He's angsty. I don't want an angsty raccoon. I want a wisecracking raccoon. He lost his friend. (laughs) Who cares? Rocket cares. Yeah, exactly. Right. Said it later. Said it years later where he's just happy and fun again. All right. LVP contenders. I have Ronan, Thanos, Nebula, Peter Serafinowicz. <laughs> Peter Serafin. He's fine. Uh, I, I, I'm going to say Nebula. She's a fucking bore. What is she doing in this movie? Nothing. And I, I, that's what I'm saying. Like Thanos is in one scene. Ronan, I think, works fine fine he's not a special villain or anything but he's fine nebula is just a fucking bore and a half yeah I, got she shows too. Up. I feel like this movie has like a women problem well, like none of the more. women are interesting to me i liked her this time uh well they do better in the next movie i think gamora's a little better in the next movie i think mantis is better than any of the female characters in this movie you know who else is there I feel like they really jacked up the female cast in the second one. Debecky? Oh, Debecky! Yo, 
And I didn't even know that was Elizabeth Debicki the first time I saw this really? movie. And now she's like my favorite character in the entire movie. Yeah, she's fun. I like the post credit scene where she's all pissed off. Yeah. That's fun. There's like eight post credit scenes in Guardians 2. I like this. There's way too many, yeah. I like the scene in in Guardians 2 where um, she's entertaining the idea of fucking Peter. Yeah, I was a bit confused. I was like, <laughs> is he with, is he with uh, Gamora? No, she... there's an unspoken thing, Logan. Right, unspoken thing. All right, my LVP is Nebula. I put this movie between Creep and How to Train Your Dragon. Oh, my God. Right, I forgot about that. Okay. It's, uh, uh, that. I mean, you got How to Train Your Dragon too high, but. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Let's move on to the second one, Logan. It's three years later. The magical three-year window. You know it's going to work out. You know, it's been fucking six years. Like, the, when Guardians 3 comes out, it's going to be six years since Guardians 2. Yeah. COVID, probably. Oh, no, didn't James Gunn get, like, the whole, the whole thing come out? He he. Yeah, oh, that's right. He got canceled by Marvel, <laughs> and then he went off and did the Suicide Squad, and that was a hit. And Marvel was like, "Come back," and uh, and so he did. Yeah, he's he's had a up and down career over the last few years because of old tweets that I read and thought were pretty funny. Um, <laughs> was it like pedophile stuff? What was it? It was pedophile jokes. Right. You know, we should be allowed to joke about disgusting things. Mm-hmm. you know pedophiles are funny it's fucking <laughs> gross yeah yeah all right let's move on all right james i'm gonna get canceled for saying pedophiles are funny can you help me out a little bit what do you want me to say uh yeah you're right they're hilarious yeah well they are you've seen happiness i have yeah i think that was real funny yeah all right James Gunn, he's our sole writer director for this one. Uh, it comes out May fifth, night, uh, two thousand seventeen. Cinco uh, de Mayo. <laughs> good call, yeah. I but it, also it's important that it's May because I feel like they weren't sure how the first one was going to do, and that's why like they released Winter Soldiers, their big Marvel movie that year, and then they put this one out in August, and now. Guardians is like a, an A-list title. So it's coming out in May, the beginning of summer. Mm-hmm. All right. It cost $200 million to make. Made $863.8 million at the box office. Uh, coming in at number uh, five. Six was Spider-Man Homecoming. This was five. Four was Jumanji. Welcome to the Jungle. What a year for Karen Gillan. Yeah, really. Biggest no- star in the world. Yeah. Number three was uh, Wonder Woman. Number two, Beauty and the Beast. And number one, Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi. That's, yeah, right. No one liked it, but everyone wanted to see it. I liked it. I saw. I it liked it too. Three times. Two or Holy three times. shit! That's insane. At least twice, maybe three. I'm gonna. Re- that's on my rewatch list. None of the other Star Wars movies are. I'm just gonna rewatch that one. How, but you've probably seen the Force Awakens a few times. Yeah, right? exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, did you I watch that, that a second? You you didn't cover that when it came out, The Force Awakens, right? No, we covered Last Jedi when that came out. Right. Okay. 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 Yeah. So I rewatched Force Awakens ahead of that movie. Right. Um, they don't really line up, but that's fine. Um, the only big uh, casting notice I can give you on this one is that Matthew McConaughey turned down the role of Chris Pratt's dad. Good. <laughs> what? He would have been good. As Chris Pratt's father? Yeah. Are you kidding me? He would have been fine. He's Matthew McConaughey. He could do anything. Uh, he turned it down specifically to do the Dark Tower, which really didn't pan out either. I feel like the only other person who could do it would be like Harrison Ford. No, Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, Matthew McConaughey. You see, it doesn't have to be an old guy, Logan. He's I a guess god. They're aliens and god. He's a god. He could be as old as he- he's billions of years old. What about what? I gotta go one. Gerard Butler. Oh my god, dude, that would have been great. Peter, I am your father. <laughs> I'm your father, Star Lord. I oh, heard that you held the Infinity Stone. And I had to go track you down. I had to know just how powerful you were. I gotta tell you, 
the the main dude on the show La Brea. Sorry, I keep bringing up La Brea, <laughs> but he has an even worse. He's a Scottish dude with an even worse American accent than Gerard Butler. Oh. Uh, all right, let's talk about the awards. They're a lot fewer because it's a sequel. The teens they didn't even nominate for anything. The first one for anything, but they recognized it and gave it best sci fi movie of the year. And Pratt and Saldana both won Best Sci-Fi Actor and Actress. Okay. Wow. Now, but listen to this interesting category: Best Ship. What do you think that's about? Um. Well, it could be one of two things, I guess. Best like spaceship. Well, that's I guess what I, that's what I assumed. I thought it would be spaceship, or it could be sailing the ocean ship, or right. it could be like relationship. That's what it is. It's relationship. Oh, okay. All right. So. Gamora and Star Lord were nominated for Best Ship. <laughs> they lost to Emma Watson and Dan Stevens. Oh See, people don't think pedophilia is funny, but they think bestiality is yeah, romantic. That's fine. So I don't know what's going on anymore in this world. That was such a big hit. It really was. I never even considered seeing it. I was there. You saw it? By myself, yeah. How was it? Uh, it was like the first one, but worse probably. Like the the cartoon, yeah, yeah. Well, they're all like that, right? Like the Lion King was like the first one, but shitty. I never saw like Cinderella or I feel like there's another one, Jungle Book. Yeah, I didn't see any of those either. I saw Christopher Robin. Does that count? I never saw that either. I, I don't know if that counts. I think the only actual one I've seen is is Lion King, but I might check out this uh, Ariel. What's your face? The Little Mermaid. The Little Mermaid. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I saw the trailer. It looked kind of good. Although I saw Flounder looks fucking disgusting. I haven't seen him. All right. Flounder's the little fish? Yeah. All right. Flounder's the little fish. Uh, all right. Oscars nominated for visual effects. Nothing else. It lost to uh, Blade Runner 2049. That's good. You don't like that movie. I don't like that movie, but the special effects are definitely better than Guardians of the Galaxy 2. That's that's a good movie. There's like a baby. Whoa, did a replicant give birth? What's going on? Hey, Batista's in that too. Yeah, he's at the <laughs> opening of that movie. Yeah. He's got little glasses, I think. He's probably the MVP. No, you know who the MVP what? is of that movie? Is Ana de Armas. Oh, yeah. She is yeah. great. Um, all right. Nick, and Michael... All right, Saturn Awards, Logan. Mm -hmm. They nominated Michael Rooker for Best Supporting Actor. Yeah. He lost to Patrick Stewart for Logan. That's fair. Yeah. Um, and it was nominated again for that Best Comic to Movie category, but this time it lost to Black Panther. That oh, I also, guess it's also, the next year. also fair. And uh, makeup, it lost to Black Panther, and it won Best Visual Effects, which I think is ridiculous because some of the visual effects in this movie are garbage. Yeah, yeah. The the beginning when fucking Batista goes inside that giant creature and then like cuts himself out of it. You know what I mean? Like when he falls out. Yeah, that looks yeah. terrible. Yeah, I didn't really think it looked that terrible. It looks terrible because there's not even it's CGI goop. Just let him come out of a thing like a practical thing with some goop. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you, but I didn't really notice it. I noticed it looks terrible. I also think everything with like Kurt Russell falling apart and coming back together at the mm -hmm. end of the movie looks terrible. I like when he's like a blue skeleton. That's oh, I cool. think he looks fucking garbage when he's a blue skeleton. <laughs> Yeah, it does look great, but I I like I like the idea. Absolute garbage. I don't know. I, it, <clears throat> excuse me. I just uh, didn't pass the smell test for me. It was like quick special effects, quick and easy. What about the de aging at the beginning? Terrible. Yeah. You know what's wild about the de aging at the beginning is they de age Kurt Russell so he looks exactly like he did in like Escape from New York or whatever, but he still sounds like a 70 year old man yeah i didn't really didn't they didn't really de-age his that. voice yeah have they have they learned how to do that yet i don't know i don't think so 
I don't think so either. We'll find out with Harrison Ford, right? I suppose we will, right? We'll see. He'll, he'll be he'll be looking like he did in Raiders, going like, "I'm Indiana Jones." <laughs> <laughs> snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Uh, He's always sounded really old, though, kind of. Not in, in Han Solo. Yeah, I guess not. <laughs> not like in the seventies. Yeah. All right. So, um, you know what I was in the mood for after Guardians of the Galaxy 2? In the uh, mood for love? No. A little Dairy Queen. Oh, really? You ain't got Dairy Queen? <laughs> Not because there's Dairy Queen all over this movie. Did it actually work? It's like Baskin Robbins in the new uh, Ant-Man movie. It's not that bad. Did that actually work? No. no. Oh. It was terrible. Come on. the Kurt Russell... And his mom in like what's supposed to be an important scene in like the history of Star Lord's life, just drive past a giant Dairy Queen. <laughs> so you see this establishing shot of a Dairy Queen, and that then, would happen. And then later in the movie, when Kurt Russell starts like destroying Earth with that blue goop, the first thing that gets destroyed is that Dairy Queen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I remember that. Come on, right, can I ask you a question? Yeah. About the intelligence level of Drax the Destroyer. Like, I don't really understand it because there's one moment where they're talking about it's it's when they defeat that alien on the thing. By the way, I like that moment where Gamora, because I like Gamora coming out of that first movie this time around. And where she's like, because she usually has that sword thing, but now she has like a gun for this weapon. And they're like, yeah, Why? I thought that was a cute bit. But then she, when she goes to kill him, it's the gun is jammed, so she uses her sword to do it. That was, I thought that was pretty cool. But they're talking about why they're doing the mission. They're like, we have to get these, they call them Anulax batteries. And Drax says, oh, Harbulary batteries. And they're like, <laughs> no, they're no, that's, that's wrong, Drax. And then later, like 30 minutes later, in movie time, I don't know how long it is in in their world time, they say Anulax batteries again. He says, no, Harbulary. Like, how does he mistake See, it and remember it exactly the, right exactly. twice? I think it would have made more sense if this... Because I thought the Harbulary thing was funny the first time. Hilarious, I thought. But then the second time, he should get it completely wrong in a different way. Yeah, I really didn't like that. That didn't make any sense to me. Yeah, you're right. Bad job there. Because he's not... But otherwise, he's, very funny. He's not stupid. He's mostly just literal. Right, right. We didn't talk about the first movie. He's like, they're like, everything goes over his head. He's like, no, if it did, I would catch it because my my reflexes are too good. <laughs> I like that a lot. A lot. Very funny. And then I like when he's drinking with um, uh, with Rocket, and he says, "Let let me let's all pour lots of this liquid into our bodies." And Rocket responds, "Like that's the first thing you've ever said that's made sense to me." Yeah, yeah, that's cute. Anyway, you got this opening. It's 34 years later after the Kurt Russell thing, and they're talking to the Sovereign. And they're a group of aliens or a race of aliens. They're all gold. Everything about them, except their teeth. I thought their teeth should have been gold, too. What were they? They were just white, like human teeth. All right. But you got Elizabeth Debicki. She's the head Sovereign. And she was really turning my crank in this movie. Yeah, I get it. I thought she was sexy as You know what else recovered it? up gold. No, what was it? The Cloverfield Paradox. Oh, my God. That's right. She was in that. I did like I, her, did though. I, or did he... I like her in Widows. Oh, I did cover that with you. Uh, yeah, she's good in Widows. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't cover that with me. Yeah, we did Cloverfield together. Really? Yeah, you, yeah of course. Remember with the, the party mix? Rob's party mix? I didn't do that with Henry. No, that was me. Come on. <laughs> no, I kind of do. You're obsessed with Mary Elizabeth Winstead, so I kind of do remember talking about her. Yeah, and you liked that second one more than me. That was kind of a nostalgia buster. Not really, but I like the second less. one's awesome, man. That shit at the end with the aliens. Holy fuck. I yeah. love aliens. You know what? But I like them when they're invading Earth. I'm less interested in them when they're in outer space. Mm hmm. I'll right. always remember that as uh, the Damien Chazelle. He wrote that movie. That's right. I forgot about that. It's much better than his new movie. All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Damn, I should have known you were going to say that. We'll talk about it. Oh, to stay tuned for um, uh, $5. 
patreon.com slash the franchise and you'll you'll listen to um hey i'm watching here this week the show where we talk about what we've been watching and i will systematically shit on every part of babylon yeah and i'll listen to it and and logan will have to listen to it just like i had to listen to three fucking hours of that movie (laughs) all right uh so then it's the opening i like the opening okay until the the bad special effects but you know, because Groot's cute, and they play a good electric light orchestra song. So yeah. it's I uh, like it how the action's all in the background. You're just watching Groot and have fun. Yeah, it was cute, and I like that they did a proper opening credit sequence. Because usually these Marvel movies don't; they just leave that for the closing credits to like oh, say who everybody is. But we got like starring Chris Pratt right at the top of this movie and shit. Really, I feel like Black Panther has an opening credits sequence. It might, but that's like a real movie. They they really endeavored to make that an actual film. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Um, next up. Oh wait, so the Debicki thing. I just love Chris Pratt saying. Um, they're talking about sex, like they like the the sovereign reproduce in like pods or whatever. Right. And Chris Pratt's like, I like the original way. You know, I like the old fashioned way. And then DeBicki's like, well, maybe sometime just for like research purposes, you can show me the old fashioned way. And I'm like, hell yeah, he's going to get that pee wet. And, uh, but then he realizes that, you know, Gamora's standing next to him and he backs off a little bit. Yeah. How did he not know originally? Well, he got caught up in it. Look at DeBicki. Yeah. Who wouldn't want to fuck that gold queen? And he loves this. We saw in the first movie, he had like a green lady in his spaceship at the start, right? Yeah, he's into that. Isn't man. that exactly like Star Trek, by the way? It is. Uh, Kirk had one in his bed. In yeah, the, like the exact same opening, I think. Yeah, that's true. Besides Chris Hemsworth dying. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's the mom. That's the same exact thing. It's, isn't it that, that into, the be- the, into the him having sex with the alien? Probably is yeah. the exact same movie. Chris Pratt lived out all his Star Trek fantasies on uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Right. All right. By next, the way, Rocket. Were you gonna say something? Sorry. No, I don't care. Rocket steals the right. uh, the batteries. You know what I'm gonna say? What? Like they did in Jurassic Park Three with Billy. <laughs> Your favorite character, Billy. Yeah, I remember when he stole the dirt, the dinosaur eggs. I know you do, because you have a turtle backpack that used to pretend to be Billy and play with. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I didn't love this. Because, I first of all, I don't really understand why he took the batteries. Like, clearly, this is, like, a race of people that are going to figure that out and go find you. And then it's, like, a really important plot point for, like, the rest of the movie. It, like, seems throwaway. Not just a plot point, but, like, an emotional plot point where at the end he's, like, all the all the people that Yondu was, like, an asshole to all came to his funeral. And he, sa- he even says at the end, like, even though he was the type of person who stole the batteries. He says that. Like, that like so if you don't care about that, I guess you don't care about Rocket in this movie. I don't care about Rocket in this movie. Even with Yondu? I like them together. I like them together. They do form a nice little comedy team when they're in like prison together. But so much of the movie is just like Rocket yelling at people. Like at one point Chris Pratt says to Rocket, like are you, you trying to be such an asshole, right? Yeah, are you trying to get everyone to hate you? I I felt like he was talking to the audience too. Like I'm yeah. starting to hate this fucker. Yeah, I thought that was kind of a nice moment. I don't know. From the Prattster. <laughs> The old Pratster. <laughs> thought he was good there. Uh, what? What we? So we see Kurt Russell next. He's a, as an old man, and he's with Mantis, who's like a sexy Asian lady with with antennae. Well, first he, of all, so ne- ne- they <laughs> got Nebula from the gold folks. Oh yeah, that's right. They were like, hey, since you brought us all the stuff, you can have Nebula back. And so Nebula, they have her as a hostage. And yeah, then they run into Kurt Russell and Nebula's like, hey guys, can you let me out now? Like there's like a bad guy. You might need the help. I can be useful. I can be like Mike Coulter in in plane. If you let me out, maybe even though I'm a hostage, I could like, I could Boy, wield you, a machine gun. You know the way to my heart. I could <laughs> save plane. <laughs> That's what reference plane. 
<laughs> yeah, man. Starring Captain Brody Tarns. Um, but uh, what do you think of Mantis? She's played by Palm Clementif. I like who her is, more than who you, Who is apparently. Palm Clementif? I don't know. I know her from these movies. I feel like she's probably a model. She looks like a model, doesn't she? Not according to Drax. He's disgusted by her. Yeah, well, that's ridiculous. In the <laughs> Palm uh, Clement. Oh, look! Apparently, she no, she trained at a prestigious drama school in Paris, so she's a legit actor. Yeah, I, I like her. Yeah, I, I think she's fine in this movie. I liked her more in the in the special. I thought like she really came together as a character for me in that. Oh, she's in the old boy. A Spike, or uh, yeah, right. Yeah, she's in the Spike Lee old boy. She's in Ingrid Goes West, which I like. I don't she's, remember her in that. Yeah, she's in a couple episodes of Westworld. She's pretty good in that too. Apparently, Uncut Gems. Yeah, I don't remember her in that, but apparently. All right, uh, I I like her though. Yeah, Palm like Clement. Mantis. Sorry, I, I called her cool. a fucking uh, model. She's just very strikingly beautiful. I I yeah. I, I just assume that's what the world she came from. I think she's interesting too. She can like uh, not just feel emotions, but she pu- she can alter emotion. She like puts she puts dad to sleep because yeah. he like is so tortured by what he did, what he did to Star Lord. Yeah, she's like uh, CM Punk in that she says go to sleep. Yeah, I wonder if she does that to him. <laughs> what the GTS? <laughs> she hits him with the GTS. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. hey you know uh cm punk actually wrote a drax the destroyer comic book once what are the <laughs> yes, odds of that? that i know awesome. it's so wild all right um has he ever written any th- any other comic books yeah a couple but i don't think any like mainstream like that mostly like indie books wow yeah all right so they meet the dad kurt russell he's like i'm a god you're half god which i hate i i was so relieved when they made Chris Pratt back into a mortal at the end of the movie, because it's like, how are you going to root for this? Like roguish Han Solo character. If he's like a literal God, that's why I don't care about Superman. Cause he's like a God. He's not a God. He's an alien. Same thing. Except he's like, except he can die. Not the same thing. I guess it's like his one weakness. He's got plenty of weaknesses. What's the other weakness? Crops. He's got a weakness for Lois Lane. Tornadoes. Sure. Tornadoes. <laughs> I killed his dad. Well, fuck that movie, man. I, Superman's a great character. I just think like all the best Superman stories are in comic books. Yeah, well, I never read any of them. Yeah, I know. All right, so who else do we meet? Still Stallone. Vesper Stallone. Yeah. Yep. A.K.A. Dwight Manfredi, <laughs> the Tulsa King. there's so many classic characters number number one (laughs) dwight manfredi number two rocky number three rambo cobra is he cobra yeah he's uh, yeah cobra something cobretti oh my goodness wow that's pretty good (laughs) that's such a good character oh dwight cobretti it's not dwight dwight is manfredi dwight cobretti he's the king of tulsa listen Gang, if you're not watching Tulsa King, I don't know what to tell you. You're missing out on the best thing around. The best, things, the best things I've watched so far this year are Tulsa King and Plane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my, yeah. All right, well, anyway, this moment I don't like. Elizabeth Debicki shows up when they're there. By the way, this moment is only to set up that, like, Stallone do- is, like, exiling Yondu so that yeah. at the end when he comes back, it's, like, a nice moment. Uh, which I guess is fine, whatever. But the Becky shows up and she, they like bring out a red carpet because they're in like a snow place. And she's like walking on a red carpet and they run out of room. And it's like, oh, record scratch. I don't think it's actual record scratch, but it's like, oh, the music stops and now we have to fix the yeah. thing. I really don't like that moment. Yeah. There's a, lot, there's a lot of moments like that in this movie. There's like the moment where, uh, what's her name from Jumanji? Karen Nebula. Gillen. Karen Gillan, she like she sort of joins the bad guys for a second or like pretends to when they take over for Yeah, she has like two or three heel face turns in this movie. Right. I I never know. I don't I still don't know if she was been a good guy or bad guy this whole time. Um like even with Infinity War and Endgame, I don't I don't know what's going on with her. But I don't like that moment where she like bites into something. She's like, "Oh, it wasn't ripe yet." 
Oh, yeah. Well, it's because Rocket told her that it wasn't ripe. Oh, that was the thing they set up? But then he, yeah, they set it up, and then she bites it anyway. Oh, I thought that was uh, not set up. But either way, that's... Here's my problem with this movie. Let's just get right into it. Yeah, what's up? It's 20 minutes longer than the first one, at two hours and 20 minutes, and yet it seems to have way less plot like there was way more shit in the first one to set up that they did economically in two hours, maybe under two hours with credits. And in this movie, I just feel like everything sits there, man. The once they get on Ego's living planet or there's whatever, no credit sequence. I don't think there's that in that first movie, right? But everything on the planet is dull. It's super dull. And then the the final fight goes on for fucking ever. I agree with that. That was my problem in the theaters is that it went on to. But I think this movie is just way more complex emotionally. I think I just care about all Yondu. I care about way more Rocket. I care about way more. They do more with uh, whether you like it or not. Gamora and Nebula uh, with uh, with Drax, with his family, how Mantis sees like how I, he... I cared. But but it's better in the first one. Like Drax has a lot of moments in this one where he's like sad about his family, but like the one moment he talked about his family in the first one, I think is a better scene than anything in this movie. Yeah. Well, this is all he gets to do in this movie. Really? Yeah. Is to complain about his family. That first one, he had a goal was kill Ronan. This one, it's just, there's no goal. It's just complained about the family. Yeah. He's fucking wasted. Right. They're all wasted. The only one that gets anything to do in this fucking movie is Pratt. And I guess Rooker. Um, Rocket. I think uh, Kurt Russell is a way better villain than Thanos and Ronan. Agreed. Though. Agreed there. But so like, that's a big he's. Step up. But I like him when he's Kurt Russell. Like, I like him when he's like a charming villain. Where it's like, is this guy good or bad? I'm not sure. Once he turns into like a giant fucking head, like the thing from Legends of the Hidden Temple, it fucking sucks. What about that random scene where uh, Gamora is like, I'm gonna go. This whole movie, there's like this weird subplot where Gamora's been like waiting for like to get contact with Rocket. And then even at the end, she finally does. And she's like, oh, thank God, finally. And that's like us being like, oh, finally. I guess she finally got contact with, with Rocket. But she goes and like sits in a field by herself to get contact. And then randomly she fights Nebula. I don't, that's kind of weird also. A random. That is so dull, man. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing to it. They just they crash and then and then talk. And then there's not they they don't resolve anything. I feel like through four and a half hours of story, they have yet to get me to give a shit about Gamora and Nebula's sisterhood. I don't care about that so much, but I do like Gamora and Chris Pratt. They have nice chemistry. Mm-hmm. I thought it was sudden in the first. But like, it's not bit. like I was rooting for them to get together. Like, I was rooting for Chris Pratt to fuck to Bicky. Yeah, I mean that would have been nice. But can't get what we want all the time. All right. So they go off Pratt and Saldana and and Drax, Batista. They go off to Ego's planet to, you know, set check it out. Hey, this guy's got his own planet. Your dad's got a planet. Check it out. Uh, and they leave Rocket and Groot and Nebula in the woods where they're like fixing their ship on this planet burhurt <laughs> bear heart i think whatever <laughs> and uh and then the bad guys show up and they and then the, them. the bad guys show up and at first rocket sets off all these explosions in the woods i thought he was being a regular clay banning about it oh wow i thought you were gonna say uh kevin McAllister. no no of course Clay Banning, Mike Banning's father from the Has Fallen franchise. Right. Yeah. Because he's he sets wo- booby traps in the woods all the time that you can press a button and it explodes. All right. Now, but they do get captured. They get taken aboard a ship the, by the Ravagers. And now Yondu's no longer in charge of them. It's this dude, Taserface. And we have a lot of fun with that name. Yeah, do you like Taserface? I thought the, the them making fun of him was funny. Do you like the end when he's like, tell them that the person who did this was 
taser face and then they start laughing again no the gold I, didn't. People. I, I didn't actually but <laughs> i liked everything leading up to that um taser face is a very funny name even though the character was played by toby from this is us my least favorite character from this is us uh, wow what does he contribute to that show um he marries the big fat one <laughs> what that's it yeah and he's like uh he wears a silly hipster hat and he makes a ton of jokes he's a real jokester yuckster and uh and they i don't want to spoil this is us for people okay yeah don't do yeah that. but uh yeah i fucking hate toby i was rooting for toby to die that whole series mm-hmm. fuck toby that's fuck what they were saying in, in the in the Paranormal Activity franchise. I'll tell you what, that's something I was saying for about 10 minutes of uh, Babylon. Wait, I forgot what, what the phrase was they were talking about. Toby Maguire. Oh, yeah. Toby. Fuck Toby. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. You know what else is, is annoying about this movie? What's that? <laughs> so, I'm, not, I'm not totally down on this movie. I like things about it. But there's so many origin stories. I feel like you got to hear everybody's fucking origin. Kurt Russell delivered, like, that's important at least, but it goes on for like 20 fucking minutes. Yeah, because we keep cutting back and forth and we're still talking about it. Yeah. And, but like, you have to hear Yandu's origin. Like, come on. Give me a break with that shit. Mantis, you have to hear her origin. I didn't need Yandu's where he's like, uh, I was a slave and then. And then uh, Stallone found me. And then, yeah, who needs it, man? Yeah. Uh, There's things me. you could cut right out of this two hour and 20 minute movie. Um, anyway, so over on Ego's planet. I like when Groot goes and helps get the Mohawk and he goes and gets like the toe and the. Yeah. And like the fake eye. That's funny. That was really funny. Yeah. I'm with you on that. I, to be honest, like. They're cutting back and forth between like Ego's planet and that ship for a while, and I'm way more interested in what's going on on the ship. Me too. I like when he explains the song Brandy. What? And he's like, "We're the we're I the don't. sailor, and we gotta go back to sea. We can't be stuck with this lady all the time hassling us. So we gotta explore." I don't know. Be I immortal. mostly liked it when he went full heel and he started talking about how he gave the mom a, a fucking brain tumor. Why did he tell him that? <laughs> yeah, he probably shouldn't have told him He was him like, that. but that sucks the time I had to give her the brain tumor. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> why? Oh, why are you revealing that? He also, like, he talks about how he's the only thing, that, like, the answer to, like, the meaning of life is spreading your seed. And so he says, like, he fucked like a million different aliens and then had offspring in the hopes that they would turn out to be like half god like him and none of them did so he just killed them all yeah and that's why he likes pete so much because it's the one son he's had with like any sort of connection to his genealogy or whatever i guess uh, also that's why gamora and nebula fight because they find those skeletons of all the things. But I don't think we need to see the skeletons to know he killed the babies, right? I think totally. they can just say he killed Wait, the babies. Why would he have that? Yeah. Why yeah. wouldn't he just dispose of all those skeletons? He has like a trophy case of dead babies? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. <laughs> I mean, you know what else I fucking hated? When they play intergalactic catch with a little ball. Oh, I like that. Fuck that shit. That was nice. You ever play catch with your dad? Yeah. Did you? Yeah, sure. All right. Hope I, I thought maybe one day so I can play catch with him. Are you serious? <laughs> I don't know. I would have I would play catch with my kid if I had a kid though. I would never have a kid. But if you did, would you play catch with them? Yeah. But nice. I'd be miserable about it because I'd be having a kid and I would have had to buy his glove and that ball <laughs> that we're playing with. <laughs> yeah, you could steal it. Tell him to steal it from his friends at school. That's true. Or I can steal it from like Walmart. I steal from Walmart a lot now. Really? That's a new yeah, thing you're doing. Because you could you go up to those self checkouts, right? And you just ring up like half the items. 
<laughs> Alarms don't go off? No, they never check. What? There's I've always stolen. usually someone there with like a little uh, checks for the receipt. There's like an old man. Like he's yeah, not usually. But and he sees I put the receipt right on top of the thing. So he's like, I see a receipt. He's walking out there with shit in bags. Must have paid. Wow. That's all he totally checked for. You can't steal everything, Logan. You just got to steal like half of it. Right, right. It's very good. Very good system I've got going here. We steal like Sour Patch Kids and stuff. You know, I'll, I'll buy like two 12 packs of, of seltzer, right? Only pay for one of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty obvious. <laughs> No, man, because it's on there. It's on the receipt. All right. <laughs> what else do you want to talk about in this movie? Oh, man. What else? What else happened? I like Stan's cameo. Who? Stan Lee. What is it in this one? He's like hanging out with the Watchers. Oh, my God. The Watchers? Was Giles there? <laughs> Very good. All right. No, Who are the Watchers? Uh, what is this? I don't remember. That's that. a thing from is the comics. Is he on the moon in this one? Yeah. In the comics, in Marvel comics, anytime they want to make us something seem important, like uh, this is an event that's important to the Marvel universe, they'll show the Watchers. They're like a race of aliens that just like they never interfere. They just like observe. Okay. Yeah. And so that that was those three dudes, like those three giant aliens he was talking to on the moon or whatever. Those were Watchers. One of them was probably Uatu, the one who oh watches God. Earth. I don't think we've seen him since then, right? No, maybe not, but they should. Like A lot of things they set up that haven't really come back. You're right. They should have shown them in like Endgame. Like when they're fighting Thanos, they should have had just like a watcher hanging out. We do in Endgame go to Guardians of the Galaxy. Remember when they go through time? We go to the Guardians verse and we see when Chris Pratt singing like the the original song yeah. in the first movie. We see that moment. I prefer the Guardian stuff in Infinity War because it actually feels tonally like the Guardians movies. Is that when Thor is like on board with them? I don't recall. <laughs> I don't either. Okay. Uh, what else you got? What else do I got? Do you like the moment where they're like, Groot, press this button, not this button, because then we're all going to die if yeah. you press this one. Yeah, I did like that. I think when I they think released Groot the trailer, might be my fucking MVP of this thing. I I really like Baby Groot. You seemed down on him, like you didn't like Baby. No, Groot. No, I I told you I was into him. I said the be- my favorite part was when he got bullied and shit. And I liked the part where he was looking for the fin and he brought the toe and stuff. And I liked mm-hmm. the part with the button. There's a lot of good Groot stuff in this movie. It's also funny when they're like, it's just cynical that they only made him a baby again because yeah. they can sell toys and shit. Sure, but. Uh, but also it does it does play in where cuz Chris Pr- uh, cuz uh Peter Quill keeps saying throughout the whole movie like uh Yondu only kept me when I was younger because I was good for, for good for thieving I could get in the small little places yeah. and then at the end of this they use baby Groot to I go know. run through the small place. I do like that I little touch. I made that it's connection. Not, it was good. That's nice. So it's not just it, they do it does play into the plot which is which is good, but I really like that. I think when they r- originally were releasing trailers for this movie, I think they released that whole little segment where they're like, "Groot, press the." I think that was like well, just the trailer. Oh, like really? Two minute trailer, just that whole little scene. It's sort of it's sort of like, like when the Scream Two trailer was just them saying the rules of sequels. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. I, I don't I don't know about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that was like its own trailer. I do remember that. Mm. All right, so they save the world again. And uh, I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. Yeah, they blow up that planet. Yondu sacrifices himself to save Peter Quill. It's a great moment. It's a good moment. You don't like it? I just don't. I don't feel the emotional resonance of it because I don't buy. Like to me, their relationship is different in this movie than it was in the first one. I watch these like back to back, and it seems like they really softened the Yondu character in this movie. Yeah, but I I agree. But I but I really do think they set it up with that line early on in that first movie where they're like, "Don't kill him, just bring him back." And they're like, "Why are you always so easy on him?" I feel like they they do sort of set it up right there. You know what I hate? I hate when Rocket tells him what you know. Groot says, "I am Groot," and he goes, "What did he say?" And he says, "Welcome to the frickin' Guardians of I the love Galaxy." That. Only he didn't say frickin'. 
Yeah, I just these, I, these movies are for fucking babies. Like, let someone say fucking once, or or then don't include it at all. Or and I at one point, like uh, the Bicky is like trying to be really, you know, threatening to them, and and she says. That's why you don't screw over the sovereign or something. Yeah. Screw. And in the first movie, there Peter Serafinowicz is like, they're a bunch of a holes. He says no, that. In the first. That's funny to me. I, oh my! What was the difference? A holes is a thing people say. That was so stupid. That's like somebody trying to be like funny. A holes. That's so stupid. That's all right. I hate it. I, I much rather. I, I like the freaking Guardians of the Galaxy way more. I like. I kind of. I kind of pop for that. I was like, oh yeah, hell yeah. No. He's part of the crew, and Groot welcomed him in. That's cool. No, it just made me feel like a baby watching this movie. All right. Um. So we did, we go. We do the funeral. For, I I I was pretty touched by all the Yondu stuff, and with the funeral, and everybody showed up. And funeral Rocket was, was good. And well, the whole rocket thing, how like even though he's a scoundrel and an a hole, they all love him anyway. And what do you think about all the funeral. David Hasselhoff stuff? Because that comes up in the funeral, and there's also a cameo earlier in the movie. Yeah, um, I mean, I didn't dislike it. I liked it when he was. I liked the bit where he says like he told his friends his dad's David Hasselhoff, uh, and I like when he pulls out that picture from his wallet to look at. But I did not like the cameo. Yeah, I had no problem with it. Okay, whatever. <laughs> All right. Um, so a few things. A few. Uh... By the way, we haven't talked about Sean Gunn. He's great in this movie, I thought. Craglin. I love Sean Gunn. He's Kirk from Gilmore Girls, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, and I thought he was getting really a step up in this movie. I really liked him. Yeah, they gave him more to do to the point where, like, he's maybe a part of the team now. Like, he yeah. might be in the third one a lot. I'm sure he is. I'm sure he's a part of the squad. Yeah. Um, I liked it at the end when he gave Peter Quill a Zune. Yeah, he says, like, so you can be current, but... This is 2007. Are they in 2000? What, what, yeah, when that's, are they? A, that's a little something called a joke, Logan. Yeah, but he but he really gave it to him, like, to use. Yeah, he's a little is behind. Is he going to figure that Probably out? Probably the last... No, it's, he's not fucking with him. I think it's just, like, the last time Sean Gunn was on Earth, he saw Zune, and that was, like, the current technology. Oh, okay. So Chris Pratt's just gonna think that that is a uh, normal, and it is like it has. It keeps three hundred songs on it. That's way more than the twenty that were on his little awesome mix. All right, I'm just saying he he, he still doesn't know. Uh, all right, so we have five post credits. I love, can I just say I love Zunes because um, uh, shout out to my old co-host Henry. I remember that his girl he had a girlfriend for a while named <laughs> who swore by the Zune. Like she insisted Zunes were better than iPods. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, that's not interesting to you. Okay, go move on. Yeah, sure. sure. Uh, by the way, at the funeral, a few famous folks, uh, Ving Rhames yeah. and Michelle Yeoh. I did not. Yeah. Possible Oscar Potential winner. Oscar winner. I think yeah. probable Oscar winner, Michelle you Yeoh. You really think so? Yeah. That's stupid. <laughs> I know. Um. All right. So five post credit scenes you want them or mid credit scenes yeah please because i didn't fucking write them down all right craglin he's he he received yondu's arrow oh that was a good one and he's working on there oh he stabs drax with yeah. it. drax is all freaking i laughed Dra- at that batista has such a funny like scream laugh uh, he's really good at they, that. yeah and they they clearly realized it because he laughs like once or twice in the original movie and he's it's laughing all over this all it's over too this much it's, it is it's that, a little too much I that agree. was everyone's complaint with this movie was it's too funny and i agree, definitely agree with that there's like wait they undercut a lot of stuff with jokes um all right the next one you've got stallone ving rames michelle yo they're like oh the funeral brought us together let's go let's go steal some stuff and then they all head off yeah what was that what are they trying to set up a ravagers tv show or something that's that was my first thought also all this was felt like setup speaking of setup we cut to elizabeth to becky she's sitting like all pissed off and she's like they fucking got away yet again and or no she probably said freaking they freaking got away yet again. And she's working on her birthing pod. She's cooking up a little something. Do you know what this is? It's I have Adam. I have no idea what the fuck this is. I, I, this I assume like it's the rock. I assume Adam, this is something but, from No, that's a DC character. I know. That was my first thought though. I, I assume it's something from the comics. 
like maybe they're setting up something from Annihilation, which was like a big the galactic crossover that like this team of guardians came from. But I don't do you want me to look it up right now? I'm kind of curious, actually. Yeah. MCU Guardians Adam. Yeah. Adam. Oh, Adam you know Warlock. what it fucking is? Adam Warlock. Oh, are you serious? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that? that's a legit character, man. Like he's introduced in the '60s. That's a that's a Stan Lee character, and he was in like the original crew of Guardians of the Galaxy. And I think he might have been the a character in this one too, but um, like in the comics. But yeah, so he he's probably gonna be brought back in another Guardians movie. Looks like oh, they cast Will the Poulter one. to play him. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's gonna be in Volume Three. Okay. All right. Well, the fourth post credit scene is you've got Teen Groot, and he's like in a messy room playing on his game, and Peter's like, God, you're so annoying. You never do clean up after yourself. But now I know what Yondu was having to deal with all this time. That's yeah, number four. It was cute. Pretty cute. And then number five, Stan Lee gets left by uh, Giles and the gang. Giles? Oh, they, he's the, all watchers. the watchers leave him. Fucking hell. <laughs> They leave him. He's like, I have so many stories left to tell. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to hear Logan talk more about Giles, patreon.com <laughs> slash the franchise. Listen to our, our show, Buffy's Angels. This week we're covering Reptile Boy and the classic episode, Halloween. Yeah. Please, this is the franchise is by far the worst show that we do. So That's if you not, like this, please listen to the other shows. It's not the worst show we do, but it's definitely my third favorite to, to record. I think it's probably the, the worst one that we do. Uh, I feel the same on, man. way about this as I do about the other one. I, f- I think this is a three and a half also. Uh, no. I think the emotion stuff really works for me in this one. You didn't really care as much, but I liked it. No, this is a three. Three. This could even be, I mean, if you're going to be a coward and do half grades, I, I would say maybe two and a half. Oh, yikes. Yeah, you just think too long. Not way funny. too long. Looks not bad. enough story for as long as it is. A lot of the special effects are gross CGI glop. Um, I I think the cast is too fractured. Like part of the fun of the first one is is their dynamics together, but a lot of them are just not together in this movie. Like Chris Pratt spends most of his time on screen with Kurt Russell. Um, just not as good. It's a worse movie than the first one. Uh, yeah, I agree. It's worse, but I think barely um yeah it's longer it's more like all over the place probably but the villain is better like that i, I want to say all but the other one's all over the place in like a bad it's way it's a better like idea a sloppy, for a villain way. it's a better idea for a villain but ultimately what it ends up happening is they fight a cgi guy you know and the planet blows up all right i'll give it a three then that's fine uh and my who's your MVP? My MVP of this one is uh, all right. Here's it could be Michael Rooker. No, I'm gonna go Baby Groot. Baby Groot. Wow, is it? Do they actually have Vin doing voices? Yeah, yeah. They they affect his voice. You can hear it's Vin. But is he doing a voice every time they do they show him talking, or is it? He's not just doing a voice. He's saying, "I am Groot" in his stupid big Vin Diesel Dominic Toretto voice, I and know. and then they're like, "But is he doing he, a take every time there is a Groot take?" Or are they? Oh yeah, taking? no, 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 absolutely. Okay, that's good then. Yeah, um, and then in post, wow. they're they're altering it to sound like a baby. So computer effects, your MVP? N- no, well. Well, yeah. I mean, right. in, in this case, Baby Groot. Like, the, that's a really nice... Listen, they've been doing CGI characters since Jar Jar Binks. You just said in this episode, I hate CGI. I do, but, like, this is something they do sometimes now. It's been happening for over 20 years, and it's almost always bad. I usually hate shit like this. Like, all, like every character in Avatar is this. But... I thought Baby Groot, he's fucking cute. He's got a little bit of, sad to see him get treated bad, and he's yeah. funny. Do you know who does the mocap for Ra- Rocket Raccoon? It's uh, Sean Gunn. That's right, Sean yeah. Gunn. Yeah. So special shout out, Sean Gunn. 
Yeah, that he does the character on set so that they have like someone to talk to like during scenes with Rocky. right. Maybe not the mocap, but like the stand in, like yeah, so they yeah. know like the eye level or whatever. Um, but yeah, so that's cool. I'm gonna go with Michael Rooker in this movie. I knew you would. Mary he Poppins. seemed to really move you. Yeah, that was really good in this movie. Okay, my second okay. favorite Michael Rooker performance after what? Merle Dixon. Oh, really? You like that character? <laughs> yeah, of course. It's my favorite. Really? It seems to me that he's in the KKK. Yeah, but he's a compelling character. <laughs> he's all right. He's just like some asshole Southern guy. I know, but he's he's cool. He's all right. All right. You like Daryl? You big Daryl guy? No, Are not you, really. You want to ride? Guy? Do you want to ride with Norman Reedus? No, I don't. <laughs> uh, LVP, I think you can go Nebula. And I think you can go Sylvester Stallone. Oh, I would never. Who else? He's the Tulsa King. Uh, yeah, it's probably Nebula again. <laughs> yeah, Nebula. Nebo baby. Nebo baby, yeah. All right, I'll go Nebula. Sorry. You oh, had I wanted, Jumanji, though. I year. wanted to give a shout out to um, Steve Agee, because he's a comedian I really like, and he, he was one of the Ravagers in this. Oh, which one? Uh, the chubby, funny one. Oh yeah, Taser Face. Yeah, no, not Taser Face. <laughs> oh man, Taser Face. Um, uh, what are we doing next? Oh, should I rank this? I put this between Creep Two and London Has Fallen. <laughs> Seventh London, place. I got news for you. London Has Fallen might be better than this. Uh, I don't know. All right. Uh, anyway, that's been Guardians of the Galaxy. I hate covering these Marvel movies. I always feel like they're boring episodes. Uh, that's possible. But this is only the fourth one that you've ever done. First one we ever did together. You guys did, have done Spider-Man. You guys did Iron Man. And you guys have done the Avengers. That's it. That's right. I try to steer clear of them because they're boring to talk about. Yeah, you might be right.